check one two one two. We live, baby. Come, come, come on. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Can you can you can you hear me now? Oh, let's go. <laughs> it's your boy Big Chew, the voice of the beat. You know what I won't blaze up. Come on, blaze up. It's a beat for me. Wah 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 wah
Check on the Molac heads in South America. They've been down there for 3,000 years. Mm. Check on it. The internet has given you guys everything you need to find out the answers to the questions. You have to just research. Mm -hmm. There were black people on this continent thousands of years before mm. Columbus. Both Hamites, the Africans, and Hebrews. Mm -hmm. They all were coming over here. That's how Christopher Columbus and the people in Europe found out there was land over here because the blacks in Africa told them prior to them conquering the Moors who owned all of Europe. Did y'all know all of the castles in Europe were built by black families? You need to do your research. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't know half of this. Yep. But back to the U.S., we were over here all the way there. The Molac head all the way down the south end of South America. They found them. You've heard about the Aztecs. I think the tribe, the, the nation of people were Mocans. Research it. They were the original Aztec, and they were as black as my daughter and I are. You know, these were all black people that had been in the Americas. They understood the sea currents. They crossed from Africa to South America, from South America up past Jamaica and up the East Coast, and the, the, the tide, the uh, ocean currents carried them back to Europe. So they were always transversing these oceans, and it was later, look at the time span, 1492. The white folks had just really got in Europe. They, they took all that from the Moors. Mm -hmm. During that time, it was that there was a black man that brought Christopher Columbus mm -hmm. to the United States. He brought those ships over here to show them, because Christopher Columbus had to go back and say yes, there is land over there, and a lot of it. And then they started their colonization. Did y'all know that during the war between Britain and the United States, it was the black Indians that the colonizers got to help them mm -hmm. to beat the British. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they, they were losing. Do you know the same thing happened during the Civil War? Yep. The South was kicking the nuts, but mm -hmm. so they told the slaves, hey, you know, y'all come and help us out. We'll get y'all free. You know, black people were like, well, wait a minute. We, we tried that already. We really did, you know. And so they said, oh, no, we guarantee it. Well, they did and they didn't. And you know how that turned out. They freed us and then they allowed the Southerners to re-enslave us using Jim Crow and everything else. Nothing's new under the sun. Remember that. Right. But as far as the Indians are concerned, here is what's important for you guys. If you don't take anything away from this, take this. Their biggest concern is not, what is it? Restitution for slavery. And they want to give you money. Oh, two, three hundred thousand dollars. Not me. Because this is our land. Mm -hmm. All of it. Mm -hmm. All of this is our land. All of the United States. There were, if you do, there was a brother that did a photo take on, I'm about to miss my experience, on the Indians, black Indians. And he was, he was a master photographer. I can't find him anymore. But he actually took all of the old pictures that were taken by the colonizers and he did his magic and he brought out the true skin tone of those Indians. We saw them as red brown people. They were as black as Wesley Snipe. Mm. I'm not kidding you. And I saw those pictures. It was on YouTube. As we're oh my gosh, where am I? As we're finding out things on YouTube, they're taking it off. So that's the maybe your daddy get off to go to work every day and I'm lost. I, I'm daddy, really quickly, because I don't want to hold you up. I want you to be able to go do okay. what you're doing, but Tell them about how the show key tribe turned into the Cherokee key tribe and why. Now, the well, it, hold on really quickly, daddy. Just so you guys know, my daddy is saying his great grandmother was a show key Indian and she was married to a Cherokee. Now go ahead, daddy. I'm sorry. And, um, what, what they did was they, they, when they colonized them and they merged them, 
mm-hmm. into one tribe. When they here's a here's a facet to understand. I know you guys have heard of the Trail of Tears. Mm-hmm. Do you know that didn't come until after the Europeans got a firm foothold in the United States to bring enough of a military here? You see, they they didn't. Um, slavery came from the south upward, mm-hmm. but in the north, there, those were all black Indians. That's where Thanksgiving's come from. The white folk were starving to death. And the Indians taught them they couldn't grow corn. We came here with knowledge. And we came here with the ability to farm. And so they almost starved to death. But the, they, when they colonized, as I said, the, the, uh, in the South, they merged the Cherokee and then they herded them all up and marched them out of there. All of this land, not restitution, what did they give the Indians, baby? Uh, baby uh, we were talking about the 40 acres. Rep- you talking about reparations? Yeah. Reparations? Repar- right. They, they want to give us rest of two. 40 acres and a damn mule. I don't need no mule. And my people owned all this land. But they give it to the light-skinned, good hair Indians. They gave them a uh, reparation. You see what I'm saying? And that's what they're trying to avoid. You guys finding out who you are and not demanding no damn 40 acres in the mule. No, you, you want the land that belongs to your ancestors. And that is what this is really all about. And you said they ter- they um, they merged the Shokee tribe with the Cherokee in order to do what? Remember yesterday what you told me? In order to take them off their land. Yeah. That's what it was all. It was always about the land. People weren't stupid. Mm-hmm. They just weren't as smart as they thought they were. But mm-hmm. they weren't. Uh, they weren't stupid. So they they really wanted the land, and that's what's going on today. They don't really want black folks to know. Hey, your ancestors owned all of this land. Which would you prefer? Forty acres and a damn mule, or the state of Louisiana? Hmm. That's the game on the table. And black people need to wake up, do your research, because some of us are from the generations that my grandfather was from Bali, Louisiana. The last name is the name of a plantation down there. So that we are connected to slavery. However, we also are connected to the land that belonged to our ancestors when the Europeans came here. And that is literally all of it. Right. All of the land. So that's what they that's what this whole thing is about. This is what they do not want black. Y'all got all these guys on there and your mama listen to them, they woke and they're doing this and they talking about do the damn research. Y'all got it half right and the other half is sitting right there in front of you. Right. You're gonna wake up, wake up. Right. And you gotta get the big picture. You know I tell you your mama, baby. I get this and I get that, but I step back from it. I want the big picture. Right. That is the game. That's the game that's on the table. The big picture. Mm-hmm. Not the little, you know, here and there, tip for tat. No, yeah, caught acres in the mule sound good. But my, my grand great great grandmother was from the Florida Panhandle at that time. So, you know, gave me my Florida. Right. Where's all my land? Right. From my people, you know. <laughs> My great grandfather with Cherokee, they own everything. Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, all that was them. Where's my land, man? That's right. all I'm saying. Right. But people, we had black people. Y'all got this. The one thing the Europeans did not count on was social media. Right. Because it, it opened the library. Y'all think it was an accident that Alexander burned those libraries down in Egypt? When that white boy walked in there and saw all that knowledge that was in that science. You know, the Greeks just admitted that all of their knowledge came from Africa. That was about a week. What? What's going on? Yeah. But we've always known that. A lot of these broke brothers are trying to tell you all that. The woke brothers. They they got broke as me, but woke. (laughs) Yeah, they they were trying to tell you all this. These these Egyptologists have it. They, They know. They don't realize how much they really know. And they know a lot, but 
they don't have the big picture mm -hmm. of who those Amites really were. In the Bible, the Most High God say, let us create man in our image, our likeness. What does that mean? Our brains, our knowledge. He gave that to them Amites, the Africans. So they were brilliant. They were doing brain surgery 3,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. When Alexander walked in that, he took all the books he could read and the people that could interpret them, and he burned the damn library down. Who burns down a library? Come on. Who does that? Even today, what sense is that? A library? They got books in there? He burned it to the ground. Then put his name on a city, which is there to this day. The city of Alexandria. Yep. But they killed They killed him because he was too powerful. And the power of Bay said, well, first we got to get rid of him. He ain't nothing but a, but a warmonger. He didn't kill anybody in front of him. So they took him out, they got his four generals, and they worked with them. That's the way they do business and got them all lined up. So we're going to give you this, that, that, and y'all just go on and do this, that. that. But do your research. All the information is out there for you people. Right. Tell them the, you know, two things. Read the Bible mm -hmm. and get your, get, your, get your history about this country. Put leads because nothing is as it seems. And there's nothing new under the sun. Baby, I am where I need to be. All right, Daddy. Daddy. Love you, dearly. I love you more, Daddy. I appreciate you. The people say they thank you for coming up. You got a lot of wisdom. They say this, they say you where I get it from. But they, look, they don't know. Me and your mom. I was about to say they don't know my mama inquisitive like this, yeah. too. It's my mama yeah. and my daddy. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. That's right. But I appreciate right, you, Daddy. Baby. Love you. I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. All right, bye. So that was my daddy. Yes, that was my daddy and whatnot, or whatever the case may be. Um, you guys, um, my daddy was born in 1953. He is 71 in October this year. He still recalls conversations with his great grandmother and his grandmother. So if he's 71, and I forgot to ask him this because he had got where he was going. But think about it like this. If he was born in 53, and keep in mind, his mother is still living. If he was born in 53, let's just say all intents and purposes, he's the second child. They were having kids young. Let's say she had him 20 years before that. So she was born in 33. And I'm just guesstimating. Uh, uh, and I don't know how old his daddy is because mind you, this is on his father's side. Just imagine how old his great grand, what year his great grandmother was uh, born in. Now I did some genealogy on my mama's side. I had not touched my daddy's side, and I uh, and let me show you. I'm about to show you right now what I found, so y'all can see what I'm talking about. And I told y'all we gonna do a uh, um, what you call them on this. Hold on. All right, y'all, I'm back. So look, here's some of the stuff I, I started with on my genealogy, right? Now, this is my mama's side. This is my mama's side. Now, here's a picture of uh, a headstone from one of my cousins who fought in World War II. You know what I'm saying? Um, born in 1913, went on to glory in 71. Uh, I have a whole bunch of... Um, of uh, uh um what do you call these uh censors yeah censors yeah u.s censors i'm sorry uh and i was able to trace a whole bunch of my stuff even on my mama's side not my daddy's side now i'm intrigued on my daddy's side and i'm gonna have to go get that but let me show y'all something remember i told y'all i know my, my people from this land because not only on my mama's side they're from here my daddy's side they're from here too i might could pull this up here uh, let me see if I can find this on here so y'all can see it too. Cause I don't want, I don't want to just be reading it and y'all don't see it. I'm a visual. So let me see if I can pull this up so y'all can see this. So in Mississippi, where my mama's side of the family from, who were Suma Indians from the Suma tribe. And we about to get into this tea, but I just want to put that part up there. I sure appreciate my daddy for coming on here. He ain't had that to do. He busy. But I told him, I said, daddy, you really got to um come on here. You know what I'm saying? And talk to these people. And he said, oh, anytime I do it, you know, just let me know. So let me see if I can find this. Uh, 
Let me see. I might can pull it up on here because I, I had it on the computer before. I don't know if I emailed it to myself. Richard Curtis Jr. And this is going to be very, very important. Let me tell you why. Because, um, because, is this the right one? No, let me look up. The, yeah, yeah, no. Jane, son of Richard Curtis. No, let's do Richard Curtis Sr. Let's get the paw up here. This is going to be very important to why we uh, speak about what we're going to speak about. Uh, hold on, y'all. Give me two seconds. It's coming up. I want to show you something. And that was just, and, and listen, let me also say this too. They got motherfuckers on here who going to be like, oh, like, uh, we, and we going to get into this doggone, um, we're going to get into this, this, uh, what do you call it? I'm sorry, y'all. We're going to get into this debate and that's what we're really on here. And I'm going to show y'all a couple of things. We're not going to do too much on it because I don't want to be here all night, but we're going to get into that. Listen, um, no, not find a grave. Is it roots that well? No, shit. Well, I might not find it. I don't have time. I'm pressed for time. So I told y'all on my mama's side, they were Suma Indians uh, and amongst others. And this guy, Richard Curtis Sr., founded the Salem Baptist Churches. And he, he basically, this is what he was. He was a clear man who was over there. What they call him? Um, not clergy. What they used to call the clear people? Um, uh, 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 um, they used to go around trying to get people to conform to Christianity. That's not my surname. That's not my my surname. Uh, just God is only. I understand. Thank you. That's not my sur. That's not my surname. Missionaries, yes. So the clear missionaries will come down there, and basically, what they would do is they would uh try to convert the, the black people or the Indians, if that's what they wanted to call them, they would try to convert them into Christianity, but they weren't going. So, long story short, listen to me and listen to me good. They he went down there, they 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 basically ran him up out of there. He had to go back and get the military. To come back and overtake that land. But my people from that land fought and fought heavy. So I'm saying all this to say there's a reason why they keep putting out. It's almost like you ever, as a child, somebody tap you on your shoulder right here. When you look that way, they really over there. That's what the government is doing to black people in America right now. Now, let me preface this before we get into this. I don't think that, um, I don't think that. I'm not one to say that there were no Africans coming from Africa, that I would be disingenuous and I would be wrong because we were already trading and going back and forth through Africa long for them clear people come here. You know what I'm saying? So it's not that Africans were not here because they were. And it's not that we possibly don't have African in our blood because we probably do. But what we don't understand is the way in which they teach us these stories about slavery, about Africa. If y'all were on my other educational Fridays, you guys hit the like button. We've already talked about how Roots was fake. Roots was on there telling y'all that this was a real story told by his grandma and woot 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 come to find out he it was a it was a lie. It was cap. And he said it out his own mouth. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go find, search Voodoo Doll TV, Roots. You're going to pull it up. Not only that, in order to keep that narrative going, in the 1950s slash 60s, we did an Educational Friday on it. How they introduced the out of Africa theory to the black children when they went to combine the schools. Remember, schools were segregated. They made the blacks think that, yo, they got better schools over here. You might want to send your churn. And then they made the clears think, oh, well, we just going to desegregate because it's the right thing to do, even though none of the sides really wanted to do it, except the black people thought, if it's better education for my children, let me go ahead and send them down the road. What happened was, that is when they were able to introduce that out of Africa theory that every black person in America comes from Africa. That's when they were able to do that. That's when they were able to do that. 
and we did a video where they were talking about it. And I showed y'all how they, the video, I didn't say it, the video showed it. Oh, uh, uh, where they were over there uh, looking at the pictures of the Africans and, and the children was just like, oh my God. And then the man was on the bus saying, oh Lord, um, uh, you know, after you see something like that, that really tear you down. You know what I'm saying? And then so on and so forth, roots and wooty wooty woo, and uh, this Clotilda stuff is is resurfacing. They are doing this to you, and, and and I'm glad you said that, Gigi. Harlem Renaissance, also, yes. You heard my daddy. My daddy said, my daddy said it was a whole bunch of Indians up north. And to us, I'm from New Orleans. I'm gonna tell y'all right now, up north is Virginia up. I'm just telling you now. So when my daddy said up north, that's what he means. But he's a truck driver. He might be a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more calculated because he's a truck driver. But at the end of the day, to people down way down here, Virginia and up, that's north. So Krishan's mother even came out and said that she's an Indian. Why is this important? And we need to get into this content. Um... Miss Global Girl says, do you believe there's African in your heritage regardless of the year, century, merge, uh, they merge with the Indians? I think that a lot of us do, but I don't think that all of us do. I think, yeah. I think, I think some of us do. I don't think that we all do. And let me tell you why, Miss Globe Girl. The reason I say that I think some of us, I mean, you know, maybe a portion of us do and not all of us, because even though Africans were coming over, they were not coming over in the amount of numbers that they told you they came over. Remember, they say like 10 million Africans. That was cap. That was cap. That was cap. They did not. It was physically and logically impossible to bring over 10 million people, even over over centuries. So. I, I, I'm not going to act like none of our blood is tainted. Of course, we mix, we mix, we, we still mix and as to this day. But I just personally don't believe that we all are African or at least have enough African in us to identify as African. Does that make sense? So, and I'm, 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 um, I'm watching this chat and somebody said, you cannot fly over a wall. You know what it makes me think about? Area 51. They got a lot of places in America, a lot of land that none of us can't go see. Do y'all know that they have pyramids in America? So if you want to go with the story of, and this only simply comes from the Bible, and, I, and I'm going to start here first. This, listen. This logic comes from the Bible because in the Bible, it says that um, all men came from the Garden of Eden. And where do they place the Garden of Eden? In Africa, correct? So if the first man comes from the Garden of Eden, which is Africa, and they, the first bones they found was Lucy came from Africa, then yes, by that logic, we all came from Africa. By that logic. But... When you peel back the layers and you think outside of that paradigm and that box and you understand that black people, and I'm using that term loosely, but black people are the people of the land, meaning we're, 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 we're just like the trees, we're like the soil, we are the people of the land. And because of that, I find it difficult that there will be this huge earth and, the, and we are supposed to be people from the land, yet we all came from one place. If we people of the land, that's the land all over, right? I, I would think so. And this is just my theory. I don't know this to be fact. But I feel like if we are people of the land, then why is that land only confound into you see what I'm saying? This one place. Because we've already went over the fact that uh, the original Hawaiians were Negro. My daddy even told you, but we, we went over that too. The original, Euro the original Europeans were Negroes. They were black people. They were black people. The original man were Negroes. So if it took decades or centuries for one monkey per science turn into a human and then make all these people or per the bible uh uh adam and eve to populate the whole earth even though according to the bible 
they said that they that all uh, Adam and Eve was forbidden to leave the Garden of Eden because out there was sin. What was the sin? It had to be other people. So I don't know. I, I you know. Yeah, the Deborah, uh, rewind it back whenever you get a chance. It was a good conversation. But all I'm saying is this, y'all. We got to think outside the box. But if we want to, you know what, For to make it a safe space for tonight, let's go with this. All of us originated in Africa. Let's go with that. All of us, all black people originated to get to, in Africa. But if we were on this here land, for centuries, when do our offspring become of said land? I'm not talking about genealogically. I'm speaking about as far as uh, 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 heritage, not heritage, well, yeah, heritage, nationality, you know what I mean? So I don't know, um, but we'll get into that. So let's go get this interview. So like I told y'all this morning, um, Yes, y'all, do your research. My daddy kept telling y'all that. Do your research. You got to do your research. You got to do your research. You got to do your research. I'm telling you, my mama and my daddy like that. Very knowledgeable, very intelligent, very smart. Both of them like that. My mama more aggressive with learning than my daddy. But my daddy is like a passive aggressive type of person. He the type, you know, he, he, you think he, he, don't, he don't really say do much or know nothing because he don't really say much. But when he get to talking... You understand it as you heard, you know, but shout out. I came from wonderful offspring. I did. I came from, I came from, from very great offspring my, between my mama and my daddy. I did. So, all right. <sighs> Gosh. Sign that up. The house of consciousness did a, what do you call it? A, um, a debate. And this is going to lead into the the slave ships. I don't I can't go over it all. I honestly don't have the time. But I do want to touch on a couple things and then we're going to move on to these slave ships cuz like I said I really don't want to be here all day. I want to be able to take Saint outside, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever the case may be. All right, let me pull it up. I'm going to find Hold on. So you have Brother Jabari. If you guys are, are unfamiliar, if you guys are unfamiliar with, let me see, is this way? You, we'll, we'll go look for it. If you guys are unfamiliar with Brother Jabari, uh, th first of all, this is the conscious community on YouTube. Uh, Brother Jabari and a new brother that I'm just finding, Rod, ha Rod Hayes, had, it wasn't a debate. It was supposed to be a discussion. But what happened was Brother Jabari, who is a college professor, who is a teacher, an author, you know, very astute brother from institution, you know what I'm saying, from, from college, you know, uh, all of his sources is going to lead back to scholarly, scholarly sources. Now, this here is Brother Jabari. This here is the Brother Rye Wade. Rod Hayes, I'm sorry. And this right here is Sinetta. If you guys don't know Sinetta, Sinetta uh, owns the House of Consciousness. He's been doing this shit for years, probably since a lot of y'all, before y'all was born. Probably, hell, before I was born. I don't know, but you know what I mean? I'm 41, but nevertheless. So they had this debate, and uh, Rod Hayes was really there to have a conversation. And, and again, I was so triggered during the debate because I'm like, yo, it's easy to debunk this. Just debunk that. Just say this. Just... But Rod Hayes was just really letting Jabari go in because Jabari is the educated brother from the bank. He also has ties to Africa. He owns property over in Africa. Uh, he's got all. And so these type of educated people like Brother Jabari, these are the people who think that walk around and think because they have X amount of degrees or because they have X amount of schools or read X amount of books. These are the people who think they smarter than everybody. And I would say, I don't know if that's the truth about Brother Jabari, but when I watched this debate, I knew for a fact that Brother Jabari thinks that when he walks through the door of the House of Consciousness, everybody else is dumb and he's the smartest brother on the block. 
Oh, yes, I know to be grifting. Hell yeah, he be grifting. He when he's talking to the Hebrew Israelites, he Hebrew Israelite. When he's talking to the Muslims, is is Allah. When he's talking to the to the Christians, is is Jesus. When he's talking to he grift. He grift. So Brother Ra Hayes, and again, I haven't done no research on him. All I know is what I've seen so far. And I might have to go dig into his stuff because he seemed like he know a lot and he was extremely patient. Brother, they are both uh, debating or having a discussion is what they're doing. They're supposedly having a discussion about the Africa theory as far as who we are versus the indigenous people of the land. Brother Jabari, the scholarly research brother, says, yo, we, we definitely from Africa. I read the books. See? See? Here's the books. I got the books. I'm a professor at this school, and I'm trying to be a professor over here. I know for a fact we are from Africa. The brother Rod Hayes said, well, I know for a fact that I'm not from Africa because my mama told me that her mama told her, and so on and so forth, that we are indigenous to this land. Now, Brother Jabari being the type of person who feel like if it don't come from a book, it ain't right or it ain't real. He feels like that's your source. He would rather, Brother Jabari, from what it seems to me, he it seems as if he would rather believe a book written by strangers than his own family. So if his grandmother came to him and said, Jabari, I don't know what his real name is. But if his grandmother, a great, great grandmother came to him and said, hey, Jabari, uh, you know, your great grandmother was X, Y, and Z. He would rather have a, a book written about who the people were at that time and believe that book over his own great grandmother. Yes, Rondo, exactly. Jabari knows what the white man tells him. Absolutely. And you could tell by the way he was regurgitating his information. It was literally like watching, it was almost like if books were audio, that was Jabari. If you were look, if you were reading a bunch of articles. Uh, books in 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 all these things. If it was on audio, Jabari would be the art the audio. So the brother Rod Hayes saying, "I know I'm not from here because my lineage tells me that I'm not from here." Brother Jabari think that's the most asinine thing in the world because he feels like, you know, you it's got to come from a scholarly source, from a book, because that's why I keep telling you indoctrinated, indoctrination, indoctr doctrine, doctorate, doctoral, doctrine, indoctrinated. A lot of religious people are indoctrinated. They don't hear nothing outside what they, uh, their religion or their pastor. A lot of new people today are indoctrinated to believe whatever a celebrity says. They are indoctrinated to worship celebrities. A lot of scholarly educational brothers are very indoctrinated. They are so well indoctrinated that if it doesn't come from a book, or a source that they were told is the, the God honest truth, it is automatically false. And that's what we're dealing with right here. Because Brother Jabari literally looked at Brother Rod Hayes and was like, that's your source? So you mean that's not a source. How is that not a source? How is that not a source? So you mean to tell me, if my daddy tell me who his great-grandmother was, that's, that's not credible? I would have to go find a book on Google or maybe in some sort of library and tell me who the people were back in those days to find out who my great grandmother was, even though my daddy lived when they lived. You get it? Let me also say something else. The indigenous people who were here were trading, traveling, and doing all sorts of things between here and all over the world, Craig, long before the colonizer stepped foot off the boat. So it is very possible. I know a lot of people have a different lot, a lot of beliefs. Hey, what I'm not here to, to convince nobody. What I'm trying to get you guys to do is think objectively. Use that third eye and actually open it up. Because I got some good sun today. I ran and I cut my grass. Oh, I got some good sun today. I feel like I got, I'm got. i in an information overload right now. Listen to me. What I'm trying to get you guys to do is just challenge your thoughts, right? Whatever you were taught, whatever, I challenge my thoughts all the time. 
because I'm not a follower of the Bible. But when my mama and my daddy say stuff that is extremely, like, you know, referenceable to the Bible, like my daddy called the Africans Hamites. And said, we, I made them in my image, right? And he said, that's why they're so smart. That's why they were doing brain surgery. Woo -de -woo -de -woo. I, I understand that some of that stuff holds true. So I, I, I try to think outside the box as well and try not to be just completely closed-minded. But I just want, when we go into this, you guys, I'm not trying to convince nobody to be nothing they not. I promise you. I just want you to be open-minded about some of the things that you were taught. That's what Educational Fridays are all about. Being open-minded about what you were taught and open to learning something different. That's all this is about. So let's get into this show. Let me see where we at on this dang on thing. Because I watched it and then I came back and watched it again. Uh, I don't want to stay on this too long. Let me see where we at. Hold on. Die. In that closed environment. Okay, good. This is a person. The whole other ship is a closed. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Rod. Hold 1787. On, brother, Rod. Hold 1787. Hold on. hold on. This is a perfect, 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 perfect. And then we're going to go get this. So now, Brother Jabari. This is why I stopped shopping on Amazon. Is telling us that the reason he know for a fact. We all came over on slave ships from uh, Africa is because the scholars say so. Th that's literally his position. It's written. It's in the museums. This, the scholars said we came from Africa, so there's no possible way. We didn't come from nowhere else for, but Africa. They took millions of people and brought them over on this boat to these lands, and that's the only way. There's no other there's nothing else but that because he's indoctrinated. Think, listen to me and listen to me good. He is uh, indoctrinated through the education system. So much so, thank you, J990. So much so that using common sense, it don't even make, he wouldn't even hear of it. He wouldn't even hear of common sense. Now they're going to start talking about the dog on uh, the ships. Brother Jabari is going to pull up these sketches because they're not photos, but these sketches of these ships, right? To say, I know for a fact we're from Africa because look, the scholars say so. Also, the sketches say so. So we got to be from Africa. What, what are you talking about? Shout out to the House, House of Conscience. You guys, please like the video. We got 522 people in here. That's good. You guys, like the video, like the video, get the video and the algorithm. This is very good information. I'm telling y'all, this is the age of Aquarius. You got to get this tea. This is the tea. I, I don't care. About, I'm over Diddy. I deal with Diddy another day. I was I was thirsting for knowledge today. So, um, yes, J90 said this is our problem. Voodoo when misinformation is past scholarship isn't rooted in common sense and technology exactly. Now that's it. That's a very important statement to me. Look, let's talk. Let's get again. Brother Jabari's position is we definitely came from Africa because they got pictures, sketches, not photos sketches and the book say so and then brother Raul Hayes is saying well my family told me I don't know about you but my family told me where I'm from and they say I'm from here now that's the argument they have and let's get into it y'all this is good it's crazy but I want you to see this in real time when I say it. don't let nobody with no no ed, no degree like I told y'all this morning do not let nobody with no degree tell you or make you feel like they're smarter than you a lot of them are a bunch of educated dummies and I'm not calling Jabari a dummy but I'm just saying I'm just gonna see it let you see it in real time. Now, let me let it play. Hold on. To show you something for a second. Let me show you something. Brother Rod mentioned this image of Africans being um, uh, uh, lined head to foot. And he said it was illogical. So I if you could show this really quickly. This is one of those models that he's referring to. And he says that this is created in, uh, in order for someone to um, tell us a narrative to disempower us. I want you to know for a second where this diagram comes from. That's the scholarship. Who created the diagram for what purpose? This diagram, which is often called description of a slave ship, was actually created by the um, abolition society who was fighting against enslavement. Did you hear what I said? This wasn't created by enslavers. This was created by abolitionists. Hey, Amy. Um, in fact, if you want to know more about it, here's the book I told you you should look at. 
I just took this picture. I had no idea we were going in this direction. But it's helpful sometimes to have all these books around you, right? This is The Slave Ship, A Human History by Marcus Redeker. Look at what we're, I'm going to show you where the picture is from. Here's the picture here. See my thumb there? I just took the picture. Description of a slave ship. Let's see what Marcus Redeker says about this image. He says, the Society for Affecting the Abolition of the Slave Trade used the measurements of a real slave ship, the Brooks of Liverpool, added Clarkson's research about the nightmarish social reality of all slave ships, and published a broadside that would become his most powerful propaganda against the slave trade. Really quickly, let me say this. I do believe that a form of slavery happened. I still think we are in a form of slavery today. So let's start there first. I'm not saying that there was no slavery. That's insane because we still slaves right now. But listen to what I'm saying. Let me show you what he's referencing. Because I'm going to let him finish, but let me show you something. I went and got the dog on uh, the photo. Now, look at this. Use your logic. You Use your logic. Don't think about nothing you read. Don't think about nothing you learned at the church house. None of that. Think about common sense. Look, this is the alleged slave ship, right? You see all how they have the people all lined around on here, right? See how they show you how they line them head to toe, head to toe, you know, on this side and on that side, woot the woot the woot. There are two levels on one side and one, two, three, Four levels on the other side. Mind you, the people are packed in here like sardine cans. They don't have a bathroom. They barely getting fed. They laid up. Mind you, and also, it takes two months minimum to make it from Ghana, where they say we from, all the way over to the Americas, assuming that this particular boat came to America because y'all forgot they stopped in what the uh what Columbus thought was the West Indies or the Indies, which is Brazil, Jamaica, Honduras, you know what I'm saying? All the islands, remember? Okay, keep this in mind. Brother Jabari is saying that this is plausible even though these people didn't have no bathroom so that mean if you were on your cycle that happened if you had to go to number one number two that happened and this is the problem with that and the brother rod is going to say that do you understand why they call it waste it's called waste because it's 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 the, the stuff that your body rejects and, and shoots out so all these people look at it look at all these rows of people lined up like this could you imagine? I'm going to let them finish. I'm going to let them finish. I feel like I'm doing too much. Let me let them finish. Hold on. Where my curse at? There you go. Let me let Jabari finish. Made by people who are fighting against enslavement, not for it. This is on if page. You pack people 10. like that. This, this is on page 210. Mm -hmm. and you so pack I, you pack people like that in the hull of a ship, they won't make it two weeks. Yeah, you're right. Many, many people died. Many won't people no be, died. It won't be no survivors. It'll be a gas chamber. It doesn't work that way. Thankfully, many of our ancestors did survive. But many of these ships were expected to lose up to... Wait, the brother said with that many people in that ship, packed the way they packed, it will, they won't survive. He said, exactly. Many of them died. He said, no, 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 no. It becomes a gas chamber. Because remember, your waste secretes gas. He said, it literally becomes a gas chamber. There's no way that those people will make it two weeks, let alone two months, to go from Ghana on a, on a wooden boat that is a paddle boat. Now, I'm not talking about the, the, the small boats we see today where it's two people on the side. They had some type of mechanism to make it paddle. But this wasn't even a doggone, this wasn't even a, a boat with an engine on it. This is a fucking paddle boat. Jabari is trying to say that this man talking crazy by saying they, there's no way they will make it with limited air supply. And it's hot. Yes, Kanisha. There's no way these people will make it because of the travel and the conditions there's no way. Jabari don't want to hear of it because the book said it did. Chuck, peep this. 
forty percent of their cargo, and many, many people died. Who was feeding all these people, and how was they taking bathroom breaks? Well, guess what? They didn't take bathroom breaks. Their feces, their menses, their urine stayed right where they were. And this is in the hull of a ship. This is in the hull of a ship. And it's not a gas chamber. It was horrific, and many people died. Ain't going to be no survivor. If that's an enclosed hull of a slave ship packed like that, there's nobody going to survive that. Nobody. Well, then you're actually Because you got our, decaying bodies. Brother Rod, Brother Rod our, our people must be pretty strong to survive that, huh? Look, it's a gas right. chamber. Okay, let me, let me ask the question another way. Anyone who survives this must be absolutely almost have super Ain't nobody going to survive that. Ain't nobody going to survive it. It's a gas chamber. Brother. I agree. Look, you just said the feces is on the ground, the I urine agree. on the ground, the menses is on the ground. Now, keep yeah. man, they got vomit on the ground. That's What's right. going to happen as this stuff putrefies? Because it's going to putrefy. People That's die. The, okay. People what? Kill and die. It's going to be a gas chamber. I'm telling you very clearly. That Ain't going to be no survivors. It's going to be a gas chamber. It's going to kill everybody in the hull of the ship. Brother. Brother, many people died. Many people died. Have you ever read the the, the description of Ottawa um, Calguano? Are you familiar with Ottawa Calguano? I'm horrible with names. Okay, my students say that, and I think that it's it's that's that's fair. It's fair for people to really struggle with the um with with names. But really, so, when you're trying, when you're trying to remember how horrific this was and how people actually survived, you'll actually hear that um, uh, they actually describe very clearly what occurred. Ottawa Cal Let me pause him because he going to another source that we can't confirm. Listen, let me show you something. So I really quickly, just for all intents and purposes, really quickly, I went and and googled and said hey um can humans inhale oh uh, toxic waste or uh, human waste look what the people say it says of the grass that compri comprise of fart nitrogen oxygen methane hydrogen and carbon dioxide volatile methyl sulfides have been identified as possible as responsible for the odor to a lesser degree Hydrogen, sulfide, gas, and methanthiol. I don't know these names. Listen, this is just a fart. This is just a fart. Open that eye right here. I hope y'all got some sun today. We gonna talk. We gonna talk about this. Open that eye right here. Uh, according to this, it says just a fart contains nitrogen, oxygen, methane, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide which is volatile methyl sulfides. This is just a fart. We haven't even gotten to the number one, number two in the menses. Let's move on. All are byproducts of bacteria in the digestive tracts and recognized by a nose as volatile organic compound. Note, however, that you're not inhaling poop feces, just gas. In any case, popular science points out that there are poop bacteria everywhere, but only a small minority of it could ever make you sick. Now, check this out. If a, if a fart, listen to me and listen to me good. Mind you, let me show you the picture again. Let me show you the picture again. Let's get back to the picture because we got to see how these people was on here. Imagine being on this ship, humans on this ship. We've already debunked the root shit was fake, so we already know that was our first visual of the bullshit. Listen, if a fart contained that many gases, just a fart, we haven't even gotten to actual excretions, blood, all these, if a fart contained that many gases and you got all these people lined up under the hull of a ship, that's the bottom, where there's little to no air, I'm talking about very little air, probably the air coming through the cracks of the wood. This is a wooden ship. 
What on God's green earth make you think that these people packed into a ship like this, and I'm not even getting on the amount of people yet, would survive two months travel under a ship, even if they took them out to use the bathroom once a month. I mean, once a uh, once a day. What makes you think they were? And then you got to go find if they got dead bodies in there. Use your, open that eye. That eye up. Everybody got that eye. You got to open your eye. Not these. These stay open. Open this eye right here. All of us have an eye right there. Open it up today. We going to learn today. Jabari, because the book said that this was it was. Jabari don't want to hear nothing other than it's this. That's it. The brother is speaking. Brother Rod, shout out to Brother Rod Hayes. He's speaking nothing but freaking not. That doesn't make sense, brother. There's no way these people will survive two weeks, let alone two months. Jabari don't want to hear of it. Let's go back to Jabari. Now, I, I showed y'all that. Let's go back to Jabari. Forty-eight TCO. You said the, your, the your God told you 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 arrive here by boat. That pops. That could possibly be true. But what if it wasn't by the boat that they told you it was? What if it was by another boat? Y'all can't hear that. Oh, I ain't even sharing it. My bad. Um, he's talking about the author. He ain't say nothing yet. Listen, that is. Let's say that is a hundred percent true. Just open that third eye to think about it like this. Open your third eye to think about it like this. What if you did arrive by boat? Just not the one that they showed you. I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't share the screen, but he was just talking about a, 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 the Arthur that he's about to get into. Like, you didn't miss nothing. So just think about that. Just It don't have to be right. It don't have to be wrong. Just think about it for, for, for people in the chat. It actually will tell you about what that trip was like. And um, it was really difficult. It was really difficult. Here goes one of the, um, I'm going to show you this. This is part of what he says. Miss Globe Girl, the genealogy tests are fake. I got to do that video. Yeah, that's not to be trusted either, but I'm going to move on. I'm sorry. This is part of what he says. First of all, he says, Kogwano begins a narrative with the count of his birth and memories of Africa from which he was kidnapped. From which he was kidnapped about 18 with about 18 or 20 boys and girls as they were playing in a field. This is one of the, oh, you have to show this on that. Mind this on you, the screen, please. Mind you, there was slavery happening. It was called indentured servitude. There was slavery that happened all over the world. Them black Europeans over in, in, in Europe, you know, the original people over there was black. They were one of the ones that were, and um, the, the people in the Middle East, they were, the, and the Egyptians, they were the ones who were practicing indigenous servitude, a form of slavery, I guess. So slavery did happen, just not the way they're trying to say, but let me let them go. This comes from um, documenting, documenting the American South, okay, from UNC. Um, and this is part of the summary. He describes what happens here, right? But let's go further down. On board the ships, nothing to be heard but rattling chains, smacking of whips, groans and cries of their fellow men. That's what he says in page 124. The slaves agree that death is more preferable than life and that a plan was concerted amongst us that we might burn or bl and blow up the ship and to perish all together in the flames. But we were betrayed by one of our own country women who slept with one of the headmen of the ship. For it was common for the filthy, dirty sailors to take the African women and lay upon their bodies. By the way, notice he uses the word African. 1787. 1787. Um, let me go back to where we were. But the men were chained and pent up in holes. After weeks in the filthy, debasing conditions that were typical of the middle of passage. No, wait, where's his? His description here. I want to go straight to his descriptions. 
he actually talks about how um, they were dis- if they were discovered eating sugar. And we supposed to- it's easier for us to believe that they killed all of the original people of this land off with disease in the open air. Hold on. I, I was kind of trying to skip Jabari with this long winded bullshit, but anyway. if they were discovered eating sugarcane, they were cruelly lashed, struck over the face to have their teeth knocked out. I mean, th- he describes how this actually works. He said if they, no. eating, if they got caught eating sugar cane, they got their teeth knocked out, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But they, the, they was chained up, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But they, they could steal the sugar cane while they was chained up. The, 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 the part about the sugar cane is when he's actually on the plantation. But, yeah, he oh, was chained. okay. He was chained. Look, in other words, they were there to that, work in the fields. If that diagram that you showed is the diagram that we supposed to believe, it's easier for us to believe that they killed all of the original people of this land off with disease in the open air than it is to believe that that with all that piss and shit and vomit and menses is not a gas chamber and they didn't die. In that closed environment, the hull of the ship is a closed environment. Mm-hmm. And we supposed to believe that all that pissing and shitting and vomiting is not putrefying, suffocating everybody with this gas. Let finish, finish, Jabari. No, wait, Sonetta. No, you're, I'm, I'm helping you now, brother. Try to use words that aren't that can't be considered cursing. Oh, yeah. no, no profanity, brother. My bad. We don't want you to. Oh, my bad, my bad, my, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, but that but it's not that it's gonna yeah. bang, huh? so let's not do that. Yeah, that, that is a gas chamber with that much human excrement putrefying in that closed environment. Nobody can survive that. Nobody. The human body cannot ingest the amount of gas from that paradigm that that ship. This is what was what I was talking about. I don't believe the paradigm that they gave us. It doesn't brother, make sense. Brother, it's not that. It's not that I don't believe that some people. Nickelodeon was kid everything. But while we on this commercial break, look, I want to make it clear to people in the chat who may be confused. I'm not saying that black hum- black people were treated differently or treated unfairly or treated poorly. I'm not saying that people from Africa didn't come over to America and were enslaved. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the point I'm making with this video is the way in which we were taught about the slave trade, especially in particular, the transatlantic slave trade, It's it has a lot of holes in it. That's all, baby. That's all. And AJ asked, so y'all don't believe in science and blood work from the doctor. Science and blood work from the doctor and genealogy are two completely different things, baby. You're going to have to come back when we talk about that topic. Just because you could do a blood transfusion don't mean that they can trace your, your lineage by way of your DNA back to a continent and with nobody to test it against. Use your logic. Who are they testing your shit again? Who, what body are they taking from the ground to test your DNA to say that's who? Who is alive that's walking around and they saying, hey, give me your blood? And then they say, yup, this a match. Who is they doing that to? Think about it. Let's get logic on here right, right quick. And, I, and I, I want people to be able to speak their mind, but I want, I, this is a learning moment for everybody. Is doing blood work in a hospital or for an emergency situation is completely different from somebody saying, hey, you spit in the tube, give it to me, and I'm gonna come back and tell you where you come from. And then they come back X amount of time later and say, yep, I found you, Nigeria 60%, India 5%, Asia 2%. Who did, who did they test against your shit to tell you where you come from? Because remember, they're using DNA. Whose DNA are they comparing it with to say that that's where you come from? Let's talk about the common sense of it all. That and having a, a surgical procedure or blood work in the hospital, those are two completely different things. That's somebody at the door. Let me let this please. Doing that anyway. All right, Saint. 
It's that the paradigm and the volume of people that they bring in is not matching up with what they're telling us because they're trying to disassociate us from our inheritance to the lands over here at the close of the age. And this is why that that um, that narrative, it doesn't belong to every uh, dark skinned, woolly hair people on the land. That narrative only belongs to a small percentage. Less than one percent of uh, one point five percent of the people that came over here owned slaves. And that's not a lot of people as slaveholders, but this was all, all by conquest of war. We know it was war conquest. It, in a lot of what was called Big Mama's houses, they took Mama name out and called them the Big House and gave us the uh, understanding that that was a plantation when they were stealing um, the rights to the land through sharecropper agreements. But a lot of, when I say I spoke to elders on the land, I'm talking tribal historians whose grids that's native to us. I'm not talking about any old Joe that I come across in the street. They got a, a job to give me certain information in order for me to tell the people that we was already here. And that that narrative of the slave trade does not fit everybody over here with brown, dark brown skin and woolly hair. It only applies to a small percentage. All right. And, hey, um, all our right. brother Jabari, Rod Hayes makes a strong, powerful Watch this. point. Watch this. When he talks about the gas chamber, brother, when he talks about the puke and the vomiting and the stitch that's coming up out of the slave ship, with a closed drop. How do you counter that? Where are the slave ships? Do you have any proof, any records that there were slave ships, Brother That's Jamari? It. If you do, well, can you well, please pull us some of that? Well, first of all, first of all, I want you yeah. to understand, I already showed you an enslaved African describing what happened to him, right? That is not proof of slave ships. I can write a book right now telling you guys that I, my great, great, great grandmother told me that she was a slave, publish it, print it, have it put out. That don't make it true. The question was, Brother Rod gave a really good example of why them people wouldn't have made it on no slave ship like that. How do you counteract that? Uh, uh, do you have any proof of any slave ship? And Jabari goes to the book he read, written by somebody who I still haven't gotten around to look yet, and saying that is a that is a source. That is not a source. If I tell y'all I drive a new I a new uh BMW or Audi out here, just because I say it don't make it so, because I don't. He's he's so smart. I, either he's really smart and stupid at the same time. I don't mean to call him stupid, but really smart and not that bright at the same time, or he's intentionally being willfully ignorant in order to evade the question. Yes, Alex Haley did it. He the one taught, if, if it were not for the movie Roots, do you guys understand this? If Alex Haley had not plagiarized the movie Roots, literally stole it from a clear man who made it up, if he had not done that, do you understand that you wouldn't have no concept of this shit? All you would have is what they said. It was the movie Roots is the reason why all of the mother slave movies came after that. Think of it. Let, let's use our common sense. Like, if it were not for Alex Haley in the 19, late 1970s, early 80s, creating the movie Roots, that was a lie, a stolen lie, mind you. If he had not created that movie, none of them other movies would have came about and you wouldn't have no concept of this shit. All you would know is what they taught you in school. You would know just, just as much about the slave shit than you know about the Revolutionary War. Just think about it. That's what I'm saying. Just think about it. So... Jabari is trying to pass off a source as someone is what they said. That don't go like that. You a scholar. 
And one thing about it, if he's a professor and he's wrote theses, as he said, well, he has to be if he's a professor. He's written theses. You know that when it comes to sources, you can't come to know nothing when say, because, oh, no, it's true. Look, because so-and-so said he knows that. Now I'm feeling like he's willfully being ignorant because I don't know what the fuck Jabari got going on. Because he, as a as a college education educated person, two three times over, he knows that somebody's word is not a source. But he literally just sat there and was like, "Oh yeah, 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 that is a source." Sinetta, that is not a source. He knows that. Let me let it go. So the on, only only. I- so that's a source, okay? The narrative of Ottawa Koguano uh, is actually a source, first of all. Um, I also want you to understand and, and hear that saying that you are a native person to this land, I think that that does give you some, um, give you claim to this land, but also being someone that was stolen from somewhere else and forced to work for over 200 years in a place and being the descendants of those people that were given no compensation, in fact, only had torture and terror as a response to their work, that is that also gives you a claim to this land. Our people also have claimed, people, of Afri- people who are Africans who were brought here and, and worked in many instances to death, we also have a claim to this land. So, uh, you know, I don't think that saying that we're just simply saying that um, that Africans uh, are, are different than the natives means that we don't have a claim to this land. I don't I don't think that you um, should say that. I also want- asked you, can you prove that there were slave ships? He said, yes, somebody said that he had an experience on them. And because the scholarship say that's his sources. But this is the man who, listen, this is why I tell, I, I, I want to preach this till my face turns yellow. And we know that's impossible. This is why I tell you guys, do not let somebody who's educated think that they are smarter than you. All that means is they can pass the test and retain information. That's it, baby. That's it. That's it. That's it, baby. And he knows in his experience as a student and a professor and a scholar that if he gave a, a thesis, if he to, if he gave an assignment to his students right now and say, yo, I need you to go get me information on trees and you need to write up a thesis. And if they came back and they sources was what they said, do you think, put a one in the chat if you think he would pass them or two in the chat if you think he would fail them. If if he had if he gave his people an assignment right now and he come back and said, oh yeah, no, it's and, and, and you gotta come with sources. That's how college works. And he and they come back and say, Yeah, um, here's my stuff. Uh and, and he said, Well, where's your sources? He said, Well, the sources is what they said. One, if you think he will pass them, two, if you think he will fail them. And this is why the more I go over this stuff. The more I realize we might be amongst more plants than we realize. Either that or Jabari is so indoctrinated that when, this is what happens to people who are indoctrinated. You know what I mean when I say indoctrinated? Indoctrinated means like whatever you were taught, whatever you believe, there's no venturing away from it. If anybody tries to get you to think anything slightly different, anything that ventures off that in that doctrine you automatically shut it down so much so you would defend it through lies you would defend it by any means necessary because that's what you believe that's it that's nothing no more so him being indoctrinated in scholarship knowing that some a book written by a person is not a source he would rather get up here to the so-called uneducated and act as if he's the smartest one because the majority of them are going to look at him as the educated brother and just automatically assume that he's smarter. He knows, I'm, I am I got degrees, so I know. Brother Jabari is either being very, either he's that indoctrinated or he's being very disingenuous. He knows good and well them people is not no source. 
but it's going to go over everybody's head as a source because they're going to automatically assume because this is the professor, this is the scholar, he be going to Africa, it's got to be right. You ever tried to talk to a Christian? You ever tried to talk to an old black woman and tell her Jesus ain't white? That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. I want to say to you, just so we clarify how the enslavement ship worked. The, the, there was very little air under that, under the, um, in the hull of the ship, but it wasn't airtight, right? It wasn't airtight. And in addition, very often, Africans would be brought up on the decks of the ships in order for them to, quote unquote, have exercise and fresh air. So they did not necessarily stay under in the hull of the ship for the entire time. That is something that I think um, uh, requires a little bit of explanation because it seems that maybe you hadn't heard that part of it. So it, it, it does not mean that um, that they were there. I've seen it on Roots. And let me say, what'd you say? I saw it on Roots when they brought him up off the ship. Okay. And then they tried to uh, mount an insurrection on the ship on Roots, okay. the beginning of Roots. That does yeah. happen. That does yeah. happen. But I, but I want you to know, it's good to watch. It might be good to watch that, but Roots is not a documentary. So you still have to do um, have to do some work to be able to... Pause. When they asked you where the slave ships was, you said it's got to be true because I read a book that said it's true. But then when he says, I saw the movie Roots, which most of us did, and we already know on this at the dollhouse that shit is fake. I didn't say it. Alex Haley said it himself. But if he going to say, well, I've seen the movie Roots, now you're going to shoot down the movie as if it's not a reliable source, yet the book that is a The only difference between a book and a movie is one is on video and one is on paper. Literally, that's the only difference. That is literally the only difference from a book and a movie. One's on paper, one's on the screen. That's it. That's it. So how is it your book is a source, but when he, even though we know Roots is bullshit, but how, how is it that your book is a source according to what they said, but when he said Roots, oh yeah, but see, no, you need to do more scholarship. That You cannot sound smart to a bitch who's smart in real life. I keep telling y'all that. And I'm not talking about educated smart. I'm talking about common sense. Like, I can, one plus one gonna always be two to me. And when people over talk and overdo and, and, and puff themselves up as if I'm this and I'm that, I see right through them. Yeah, that's where we're at. Let, let me let it finish off a little bit, then we're gonna get into this Clotilde ship. Um, to discover some of this. Let me show you some other sources, okay? Let me show you some more sources. Sonetta asked me to describe some of the ships. Let me describe some of the ships and also show you how we actually were able to um, know precisely that these things occurred, okay? Let's start here. This is number nine, but we'll start here, right? Um, first of all, look at this ad. This is a Newport ad for the sales of Africans from the Gold Coast. Do you know where the Gold Coast is? What's the Gold Coast? You're muted, brother. That's on the on the western. This Glow Girl, do me a favor. She said Nah Roots was faction source. Alex Haley. <laughs> girl, y'all crazy. Coast. Oh, this is what we're going to. I want to show y'all this too. Now he's showing old, alleged old. Uh, 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 advertising for so-called slaves. Now he's gonna go with shit that was already debunked by Dan Calloway, but we could get into that too. Let's get into it. Uh, uh Africa. This yes, is but... him trying to prove that the ships were real, and 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 what happened happened. Look, they're speaking specifically about a particular country when they say Gold Coast. Do you yeah, know, that, I th I think it's uh, ain't that Ghana? Yes, it is. Yes, it okay. is, brother. It's Ghana. The British who were in control of Ghana at the time began to call it the Gold Coast. So if you look here, this is from Newport, right? June 6, 1763. On Thursday, 
have to arrive from the coast of Africa, the Brig Royal Charlotte. They give you the name of the ship with a parcel of extreme fine, healthy, well-limbed Gold Coast slaves, men, women, boys, and girls, gentlemen in town and country have now an opportunity to furnish themselves with such which will suit them. By the way, it's really bizarre that sometimes S's are drawn almost like we would consider lowercase F's, but that is how they were drawn often during this period. Those that want are desired to apply very speedily or they will um, lose, lose the advantage of supplying themselves. So they're saying come and um, purchase these Africans quickly because- Mind you, this source comes from a museum. Yep. Just like the African American Museum. Hell, they got a World War II history mu museum in New Orleans. So you mean to tell me if I'm writing a paper on World War II, I could go and pull a source from the a museum and be like, yep, it's true, because look, the museum said it. He uses stuff from the fucking uh, Smithsonian and all of that. Look. A lot of people will uh, will get them. So we have bills of sales of humans That's not a bill and the bill. related enslavement related <laughs> product. I'm not going to let you do it. That is not a bill of sale. That is an ad. That Let me say that again. That is not a bill of sale. That is an ad. The only reason that went over most people's head is because they are literally thinking that Jabari is the smarter person of the two. Listen, look at Newport, uh, 19, 1763. On this day or whatever, whatever, Gold Coast slaves, they, they describe them, men, women, boys, girls, gentlemen, blah, 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 apply to Thomas Teckler Taylor, Samuel and William Vernon. Let's say this is true. This is not a bill of sale. This is an ad. But Jabari just says, yup, see, it's a bill of sale. No, the, a bill of sale would say you bought two bucks, one winch, and blah, 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 this the age, and this how much it costs for the bucks, this how much it costs for the winch, this how much it costs for whatever they call the babies, this was the total, this what you gave me. That is a bill of sale. This is an ad. And he only is saying, nope, yup, see, that's a bill of sale. What? And this is the professor. This is the professor. <laughs> this is the professor. Mind you, this is another thing I want to say. We had no um, computers and printers. So who typed this up? Yo, yo, are we tracking on that? We have no computers and printers in 1763. Who typed this up? They ain't even had no typewriter. Who typed this up? Open that third eye. Open that third eye. We did not have computers, typewriters, printers. Now, who typed this up? It's rhetorical. It's rhetorical. In 1763, who typed this up? People saying they had printing press. Let's go see. Let's go see. I hate Wikipedia. Hold on, let me scroll down. Let me see where we at. Printing press. Da, 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 da. Uh, okay, let's let's go here. The history.com. Let's go here. That allows the printing press is a device that allows for the mass production of uniform printed matter, mainly text in the form of books, pamphlets, and newspapers. Created in China, the printing press revolutionized society there were there, there before being further developed in Europe in the 15th century by Johannes Gutenberg or whatever, and his invention in the Gutenberg press. Okay. Who invented it? Uh no one knows who invented the first printing press. Uh no, I'm sorry. No one knows when the first printing press was invented or who invented it. How? 
I bet you it was a, a black person. But the oldest known printed text originated in China during the millennium AD. The Diamond Sura, a Buddhist book from uh, Duhangang, whatever, China, from around 86, 8, 868 AD during the Tang Dynasty is said to be the oldest known printed book. Okay, let's go with this. Let's go with this. So they saying 868 years after Jesus Christ on the bike killed over, allegedly, the people in China created the printed press. If the people in China, first of all, they don't know who did it. They don't know who invented it. They don't know nothing. All they know is they found something that was going back from 868 AD. Y'all got to pay attention to these half, this half information. Pay attention to this half information. You're going to tell me about a printing press, but you don't know when it was invented and who invented it? Hmm. Hmm. Somebody said the font. One choice said the font is wrong for that time. I mean, I, again, I didn't even look into this. Only thing I'm saying is in 1763, we didn't have no computers. We didn't have no, uh, no printers and we didn't have no, uh, no, no, no typewriters who typed that up to look like this. But even going back to this, listen to what I'm saying. Even going back to this, according to history.com, this is also what they say it. These are the same people, if you go to history, they're going to put the same, put the same slave ship in. They're going to tell you that's true too. So take that with a grain of salt. They telling you about a printing press and they telling you when, but they don't know who. Right. The real China doll. Like they say, they don't know who put up the Georgia Guidestones. Absolutely. I'm not telling you to listen to what I'm saying. Just open your ear, your mind, and just think, just think. Because the educational system got Brother Jabari thinking that if it ain't come from the uh, from a book, no matter who wrote it, it can't be true. <sighs> we have enslavement ships. Here goes ads for two enslavement ships. Sources, by the way. The top one is from 1887. If, and the if the question is to show and prove that slave ships exist, then where's your proof? An ad is not a freaking... That's not a source. Bottom from 1872. These are ads for the sales of enslavement ships. And by the way, they're saying that they're suited for the Africa trade. Just so you know, they're telling you where they where they go to. Take a look here. Uh -uh, Miss Globe Girl, Miss Globe Girl, History.com said that it came out of uh, Asia somewhere in after 868 years after Jesus Christ died. The white one, though, not the black one. Um, at an exchange coffee house this present Saturday of June, second, the 2nd of June, at 1 o'clock precisely, the ship Juba, berthing about 120 tons, now ly lying in the mud dock, sails were remarkably safe and is well calculated for the Africa trade. Inventories to be seen at the insurance office or by applying to, and they're telling you who was going to be selling it. This is in hey, Bristol. Wait, really Look quickly. at this one. That one don't even say it's selling slaves. Did y'all catch that? The one he just showed, it don't say nothing about selling no slaves. They just talking about, hold on, let me let me make it go, go over here. They don't say nothing about slaves on here. In exchange at the exchange of coffee house, it was present day Saturday, 2nd of June, at one o'clock, the ship Juba, uh, whatever, whatever, 120 tons, now lying in mud duck, fails remarkably flat and is well calculated for the Africa trade inventories to be seen at the insurance offices or be, by applying to whoever this person is. How you know that wasn't a uh, 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 corn or grain? How you know what that is? How you know? That don't, that don't say nothing about no slave. That's just a, a ad for selling. Second, the 2nd of June at 1 o'clock precisely, the ship Juba, berthing about 120 tons, now ly lying in the mud dock, sails were remarkably safe and is well calculated for the Africa trade. Inventories to be seen at the insurance office or by applying to, and they're telling you who was going to be selling it. This is in Bristol.
Look at this one. Here's another one, right? They're auctioning an enslavement ship. This one is the Catherine, right? The one up above here was the, the ship Juba. This one is the Catherine, right? And it says, once again, fit for the African or South Sea trade. They're selling these ships. So they're letting you know what they're mm, doing. Mm, 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 mm. For sale by auction at the Exchange Coffee House on Thursday, next 15th of March, uh, whatever, whatever, one o'clock, if not, whatever, whatever. The ship, the Catherine, with all her stores as per inventory, lately employed in the trade of the Charlton, Burton, and 180 tons per reg regular, I'm sorry, regulator, a very prime failure fit for the African or South Sea trade. Further particulars may be known by applying to this person. Where in that do they say that's a slave ship? Just because they say it's fit for the African or the South Sea trade, what trade of what? And he didn't even read this one. Listen, he didn't even read this one. He just glossed over this one. See, this is another one. That was the Juba. This right here is the Catherine. See, see, see. Why you didn't read it? Just because it's right, uh, Cajun Deja, just because it said fit for the African don't mean that mean a slave. The, the other, the first one he showed says slave. Why these don't say slave? We were trading, people were trading all over the world, Craig, long before the transatlantic slave shit happened. They were, they've been trading. They've been trading. So just because it said fit for the African, maybe the Africans were the fucking master traders at the time. How would Jabari think he's slick? No, I'm lying. He don't think he's slick. He's got a way of getting over on the masses because we're going to automatically assume this is the educated brother. He knows exactly what he's talking about because he showed us something. Ain't nobody going to dig deep into this. Everybody going to just assume that Jabari know what the hell he's talking about because he's a professor. Duh. He be going to Africa. Duh. Right? They're auctioning an enslavement ship. This one is the Catherine, right? The one up above here was the the ship juba this one is the catherine right and it says once again fit for the african or south sea trade they're selling these ships so they're letting you know what they're doing um we have records of revolts we have um that happens from africans we have i didn't see can you blow those back up again because i was trying to see where it says slave on there or african trade because we already know we've been trading with Africa for thousands of years. That's not new. But who's the we, brother? These are Europeans. Who's the we? Well, the okay. natives from over that's here. Another, that's another slip over that he's going to do. What do you mean, we, brother? These are Europeans. The first Europeans were black. Did my daddy tell y'all that? Not only that, it's been proven. The statues. The first Europeans were black. I'm going to let this roll because I'm going to go get it for you. Oh, yes. The first Europeans, those Moors and all of them and a bunch of other, they were black. The first Italians were black. The first, all of the, they were black. That's why they was able to use them to help them get over here. They, them clear people ain't know what the fuck was going on. They had to go get a, a black person to help them because we was already moving around like that. So, He's trying to say, what do you mean who? These are Europeans. Black ones or white ones, sir? Black ones or white ones? Oh. The seafaring people, they used to trade with Africans too. Brother, uh, d d listen, in order for you to make that claim, you have to come with a source. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how you make that claim. We're, they're telling you right here that these ships were being sold for the at auction. That's well, it's telling me the ship. Look, it's telling me the ship is going to be. It's telling me the ship. These aren't the. Hold on. These aren't the native people from this place putting out an ad for the Africa trade. Um, and selling it in an English newspaper. It doesn't work that way. I have no, I would love okay. for you to find They was ad. trading with Africa too. Brother. So this is, this, uh, there's no slave on here that indicate that this is a specifically a slave ship. They, they, it's wait, it's wait, all wait. throughout history books that there was spices and different things and sauce being traded across the ocean. Okay. Hold, hold on, brother. 
We have I was a- just looking to see if this said it was a slave ship or it was a ship that was made for trading in general. We actually have a lot of records for the ship called Juba. Mm-hmm. We know who owned it. It was owned by Richard Farr Company. And we know where they went because we I can also show you the, the uh, manifest of the of the um of what they sold. Here we go. Okay. Let me show you this one. Here we go. This is what they sold. This is the bill of lading for cargo on the ship Juba. Can you see that? Wait. This nigga, this is the professor now. This is the professor. This nigga went to what is it, Port Cities, Bristol? I can't see the site. With listen, listen, we don't even know if this is a value, uh, uh, not value, a verified source. But he went to this and found a source that had a picture of a bill of sales, not even an actual like the pic, like a picture of a bill of sales. And this is the the straw that's gonna break the camelback, girl. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it now. Hmm. And it's really, really small. But you can see here them describing, I want to be able to read it to you here. Okay. It's really hard to read it here. Let me read, this is the description of what it's what it says, right? This is from the National Archives from 2004. It says very clearly here, the cargo that they were shipping included 115 males, 150 females, as well as ivory, palm oil, and dye wood. Okay. So it tells you what they were, what their cargo was. But they, that's not okay. slaves. I got you. I, I, see what you I, was, I just didn't see it in the flyer, and I was just asking because I didn't see it in the flyer. Yeah, well, brother, we have a lot of information about both of these ships, the Catherine and the Juba. We can follow them along what happens for a really long time. Okay? Um, let me show you more on the ships. I'm going to move past this. Let's go. By the way, I love showing this picture. Sonnetter has seen it before. Sonnetter, do you remember what this picture is? You're muted, Sa. Watch this inference. Watch what he's trying to reference. What? Yeah, it's a car in front of your building. And after this, we <laughs> this is the building that uh, Anika and I currently own. This building right here. Yeah. This is our house. And if you look at it, look at this car in front there. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Do you see cars like this running on the street regularly today? No. Now, this is much more recent than the enslavement trade, but you would be, it would be very hard for you to find a car like this. This was in the 1930s. Why should you expect that you would just find enslavement ships from the 1830s everywhere? Oh, hell no. The reality is that when something is no longer used, it's usually broken down for its constituent parts. Sweet Slove says, but they exist. Yes, and the enslavement ships exist too. I'm just saying that with all of the ships that were used, you shouldn't expect to find all of them. Girl. You're going to find Okay, so that when I be talking about slave ships, I'm not talking about one that only housed 230 so-called Africans. I'm talking about that one you showed the picture of where they was telling us they were shipping two and three thousand at a time. I don't I've never seen a ship um, uh, with two or three thousand at a time. I haven't. But seen that's it. the narrative that we was given in school. I don't your school didn't tell you they shipped two and three. Yes, they did. Stop it, brother. Stop that. Show me a book that says show me a book from your school that says they should. Brother, I study this all day, every day. It was in the school when I that's where I learned about the slave trade. And you found a ship that can hold two or three thousand enslaved Africans? I ain't never found that ship. I'm saying but that diagram, listen, that diagram that you showed us. Brother, brother, if you find a book from your schooling that says that they had two or three thousand Africans on board, I will eat it. All right. <laughs> All right. Shut up, Jabari. Jabari, you, do y- are y'all see what I'm... See, I said I wanted you guys to see it in real time. I want you guys to see it in real time. So Jabari has no sources. He got a picture of a bill of lading from a website, and he got some ads that 
basically don't even say they're selling slaves. But now you want to get on here when this boy say they ship X amount of people. How does that make sense? Hold, put a trigger in that. Put a trigger. Put a pin in that. I'm reading the comments. Let me let me bring you over here to Exhibit A. Because, see, this is the part they don't tell you. See, when Jabari says stuff like, but they were European, right? Look at the statues from the Moorish age. Listen, in the, in the Roman period, look what these folks look like. Look what these folks look like. Now, I know y'all saw 300 and the clear man kicked the dude down the tube and said, this is Sparta. And we all thought it was just a bunch of well-fit, six-pack, fine, clear men. These are some of the hidden statues, listen to me and listen to me good, of Europeans. But see, in the movies, they make them clear. They don't know where the clear people really come from, so they just say Europe. So we automatically assume that the Europeans at that time were clear. But the gag is they were not. Them clear people came somewhere else, came from somewhere else and in, 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 in enslaved, in, not enslaved, but conquered them folk. Let's get back to Jabari, bro. So now Jabari is on here. Now, Jabari, if I was your professor, professor, you failed. I don't give a damn if you wrote a fire ass thesis. I don't give a damn if, if your paper was top notch. Just by your sources, sir, you failed. You, you, listen, I went to college. I studied. I, I have a degree in psychology and research. Listen to me and listen to me good. I know the requirements for uh, for a research paper or even a thesis or anything. He's failed. He failed. None of his sources were were accurate. None of his sources were even worthy. They aren't even. You can't even use them sources. If if his student came to him right now with them same sources, he would fail them. He failed. But I believe, like I say, the more I'm listening to this, he he. He, he I'm, I'm starting to believe like they said, this nigga might be a plant because you can't be that slow. You can't have, have all that education and be that slow, huh? They do that? Let's go get these slave ships and so we can get up and move to this Clotilde. Look. So here is the Encyclopedia Virginia. Remember they said Virginia was a big port for the slaves. You know, Virginia, New Orleans, Carolina, Savannah, everywhere the water was, right? Let me show you how even your cited sources aren't even true. Peep it. Now, according to Encyclopedia Virginia, this is a .org site. When I went through college, they told me, you can't even bring me nothing from a site that say .com. You can't. It's got to be .edu, .org. It has to be APA approved. It has to be, you know, it, it's, it's levels to this shit. So if I'm thinking in that mindset, shit, this is a .org site. It's got to be true. False. Let's get into it. So, um, and I'm going I'm to pin the link to that video in the description when we get off here. It's a like, it's like two, three hours, yo, but it's a good listen because they bring some other people up on there. Um, they, oh, .gov too. Thank you, Nas. They bring some other people up on there and he gets really in his feelings. Y'all got to check it out. It's a really good interview or a so-called debate. So according to encyclopedia.org, right? Uh, I'm sorry, encyclopediavirginia.org. These are the exact same pictures that I showed you and Brother Rod, not Brother Rod, Brother Jabari showed you. See, same two stories over here. One, two, three, four, five over here. So you how they pack them and pack them, you see? Let's, 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 let's get into it. Now, according to Encyclopedia Britannica from Virginia, Jabari said, who told you they shipped that many slaves? That's a lie. You bring me a book that tell you they ship that many slaves, then I'm going to tell you I will eat a book. Well, let's go get the encyclopedia. They said the slave ship was means by which 12.5 million enslaved Africans were imported from Africa to the Americas between 1500 and 1866 as a part of the transatlantic slave ship. I'm um, trade. I'm sorry. Pete, let's let's get into it. Slaves, slave ship range in size from a 10-ton Hesk 
which could carry a few, a crew of, I'm sorry, which could carry a crew plus 30 captive F Africans to the, to the, so let me back it up. I'm, 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 my brain going faster than my eyes. Listen, slave ship range in size from the 10 ton Haskett, which could carry a crew plus 30 captive Africans. So a crew, let's just say four to six people plus 30 people. That's one. Also, it says the 566 ton par, which could carry a crew of over 100 and could hold a cargo at, of as many 700 enslaved people. 566 ton ship, they say you got a, a crew and hot cargo and, no, I'm sorry, which carried a crew of 100 plus cargo, 700 enslaved people. Now he oh, Jabari stayed two to three hundred at a time. There's no way no book will take. But let's get let's let's keep reading. Now encyclopedia said that's eight hundred people plus cargo. The lower deck of a ship was divided into separate compartments for men and women. When the men shackled together in pairs and the women left unchanged but confined below, the conditions were appalling. With hundreds of people, hundreds of people crowded together with a little air with little airflow and even less sanitation let's 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 go back now hold on captive africans suffer from disease such as dysentery and smallpox depression and outright despair outright despair and depression were the diseases the cruelty of captain and crew were actual exploitation as a result mortality rates ranged average above 20% for captive Africans in the first decades of the slave trade and about 10% by 1800. So well, let me get this straight. You mean to tell me a ship that's 566 tons that carry 100 people on the crew plus cargo and then 700 captive Africans. You telling me that after about the 1800s, only 10% perished? Only 10, this is what they're saying. They're saying, and my, yeah, for, 40, for for two to three months, this is a long travel. Remember, this is not a mechanized boat. This is a, a, a wooden paddle boat, a wooden ship. You mean to tell me, you mean to tell me that out of 800 people plus cargo on board, let's just count the 700 Africans you said, only 10% of them was lost? In, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Only 10% of them was lost in these conditions. Seven hundred people. Look at the levels, y'all. Look at the levels. You got two levels over here, and you got one, two, three, four levels over there. You mean to tell me with these people head to toe that they only 10% by the 1800s didn't make it? 10%. Mind you, it's 100 crew members and 700 Africans. Let, let, let me say that again. That ain't even a third. There's 100 crew members and 700 Africans. Hmm. 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 And I wanted to see this too. Real quickly, just for my own shits and giggles, S's and G's, I won't go see something. Hold on. So, hold on. I'm trying to see something. So, these folks said, let me go get it. These folks said, the one that carries 700 folks was a 566 ton ship. I want to see what that looks like. I had to go see. So, oh shit, I pressed something I shouldn't have had to. Hold on. I wanted to go see what that looks like. Because you see the picture right here. But see, I'm a visual type of bitch. I need to see a little bit. I need to see it in real time. Now, as I go and search for this 566 ton ship, right? Uh, Nope, that's 300. You go to five, nope, 100, 1,250, 400, 500. If I see, let's do a 600 just for shits and giggles. 
right? This is a 600 ton ship. Which one you want me to choose? Which one you want me to choose? Um, no, 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 no. Let's choose one that we can identify with today. Uh, I ain't gonna play no video because I don't want them to, they be copywriting behind stupid shit like this. Let's just go get this one. This is a 600 ton ship, not 566, 600. Let me see if I click on it. Let me see if I click on it so we can get a bigger picture. We need to get a bigger picture. I'm just trying to show y'all something. Here you go. This right here, people, is a 600 ton ship. These folks say 100 crew members plus cargo and 700 captive slaves is on this ship. That's 800 people plus cargo. And this is a mechanized ship. This is a ship that's got the bells and whistles. We're talking about wood. We, let's, let's put things into perspective. We're talking about wood. You trying to tell me that 700 folk, because remember Jabari said only two to 300. 700 enslaved cap. Where, you go, where your cargo going to go? And th like I said, this is a modern ship. When I put in 600 ton ship, they only give me modern ones. But look, let's just say you put 700 folk down here. Even if you laid them down and packed them out like sardines, they said it was four, uh, four rows on one side, two on the other. Where your cargo going to go? Thank you, Fat Face, for becoming a new uh, subscriber. Where, where your cargo going to go? Where your 100 people? Because remind you, this is a two to three months to a uh, trip. Your food, yes, and the food, Sharice. You got 700 people down below. Where the cargo gonna go? Then you got 100 crew members. And what about the food? Put a one in the chat if you believe 800 people plus food and cargo fitting on this boat right here in 2024. No matter how you pack them down there and they gonna make it alive. Put a one in the chat if 800 people plus food and cargo is going on this boat. Put a two in the chat if there's no way. Yeah, JJ, we just saw we just saw how they was laying on top of each other. 800 people. 800. Plus food, plus cargo. Hmm. And this is a 600 ton ship. So this is bigger than the 566. That's what the encyclopedia people said. Now, if that's not a good source, .org, I don't know what to tell y'all. Remember I told y'all when they say men lie, women lie, and numbers don't lie, I say they, the numbers is a motherfucking lie. They lie the most. Remember I told y'all that? I believe that too, Nas. The wooden ship would have sunk. Oh, yes. Oh, I ain't even shared a tab that I need to share with y'all. Y'all need to see it bigger. Let's go. I need y'all to see it bigger. My bad. Numbers can, numbers can be adjusted to make you believe whatever the, the research wants you to believe. Yes, you're right. I need y'all to see it big. See how many passengers can fit on that boat? Let's go see. I'm glad. That, see y'all. That's why I fuck with the dollhouse, man. Y'all smart. Y'all smarter. Y'all smarter than a bitch. You feel me? Let's see. Let me go see. How many passengers? It on. I'm gonna do 600 ton boat. Boat. All right. Let's see. I want to see. I'm. I'm. I'm leaving this picture up there. Up there for y'all to see. Hold on. I'm gonna go to the first source I see. Cause I mean, at this point, this a boat in sight. They should know, right? <laughs> Allegedly. Um, let me go see. Let me scroll down. Let's go over here, y'all. This is the source. It comes from boat, boaterexam.com. So this is an exam. You got to take this. This is an exam. 
It says one of the most important things you need to know before setting out on the water is the maximum number of people and maximum amount of weight that your boat can safely handle. Not only is this important for safety concern, it is the law. Federal law mandates that all power boats less than 20 feet in length need to carry this information. Da, 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 da. Each capacity plate includes the maximum number of adult persons, the maximum gross load, and the maximum size of engine and horsepower that your boat can legally carry. We're not talking about legally. We want to see what happens before the ship go down. Hold on. Let me see. Where's my damn cursor? Here you go. Now, this is from the Coast Guard. Hold on. If your boat doesn't have a capacity plate, we don't care. Boat capacity. Duh, duh, duh. Uh, there are a number of variables that the boat manufacturers consider when determining the maximum person that appear on your capacity plate. One of those variables is the weight of each person. Now, remember, they're not taking this into, um, into consideration. I'm trying to see something. I don't think this is a good source. Hold on. Let me go get the cruise ship somebody see. Let me see. Cruise ship. I'm going to do cruise ship that fits 600 pass passengers. I'm, I'm trying to see something. <sighs> Let's see, let me scroll down. You know what? Let me do it like this. Because they these cruise ships be fitting two, three thousand. Hold on. Let me see. I'm going to just say boat that fits. Let me do a boat. Let me say boat that fits 600 passengers. Uh, we just went on there. Um, I'm trying to get a, I don't know if I want to play this video. Cause they got videos of boat that could fit. Let me see if I could look at it. And then whatever I see, if they pause it, I'll show y'all. They're going to show you boats that could fit 600 passengers. Hold on. I don't want to play the video because that's where the copyright strikes be coming from. Shit like this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hold on. Let me put it back on the picture that I had so y'all can see that. Let me put it back over here so y'all can see it. Say over here, pitter pattering. Oh, all right, let me see. Mm. I see a lot of boat capacity and rules. Boston Whaler, most popular cruise boats, new and used boats for sale. I don't see it. I don't see it, you guys, and I'll have to do some more um, research on this. But the point I'm making is you're looking at this boat is not even big as the cargo ships that we have today. And even they don't fit 800 people. Hell, if you look at the doggone uh, the Navy ships that fit thousands of people, you know what I'm saying? Cap is all I'm saying. Brother Jabari full of shit. Um, no, they don't have pictures. They have they have drawings, Divine. And we're about to get into that. I'm glad you brought that up. Ain't no photos. It's all drawings, even though the camera was existed. The, the photos existed. Hold on. Let's go do this. Let's go get to um the Clotilda. Y'all remember that that um that boat that they say washed up on uh in Mobile a little while ago, a, a couple of years ago. Remember that the Clotilda. They say it was, it was, it was, it was prime time 
because now we finally get something from um the Clotilda. Remember? I got a video for this one. In case you didn't remember, we going to get it. Hold on, let me let this air play. Africa Town, Mobile, Alabama. Y'all remember that? They call it Africa Town. Now, think about what my daddy told y'all when we first came on here. Think about what my daddy told y'all when we first came on here. My daddy said they they changed the names of the some of the tribes and made them all Cherokee by way in which to steal the land. My daddy said that. Look. And I'm about to debunk this shit, even though I know other people has debunked it. But let's just go get it. All right. So this here, am I on it? Yeah, I'm sharing it. This here is some of the parts of this Clotilda shit, right? Africa town, Mobile, Alabama. They got Negroes on here to say, yup, that was my people. Look at this. On board. Keep in mind, remember last week, or was it last week or the week before, that um we saw them 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 people reading. Keep that in the front of your mind. That looks like an illustration. Ain't it an illustration? They had photos. Why they got an illustration of this of this man? Why why is there an illustration of the ancestor? Who drew this? Who drew this? This ain't no picture. Somebody drew this. Who did this and why? Y'all don't have no pictures of this man? Oh, my God. Saved his owner changed his name to Charlie Lewis. This image is from around 1900. Poli Allen, whose African name was Capoli, seen in this 100-year-old sketch. 100-year-old sketch. That, that means we in 2020. And let's say 2020 at the time of this. That was in 1920. Y'all ain't have no pictures? Another sketch. Y'all ain't have no pictures? Watch how these people... Uh, 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 uh. Oh, yeah. Opinionated. I'm glad you brought that up. Opinionated says there's a full documentary on Netflix about Clotilda. It's called The Descendants. Be weary of the shit they put on TV. Do you hear me? T. Robert say voodoo hush, Picasso drew it. They must, he must have did. It's actually good work. He must have did drive. You're right, T. Roberts. It, it, they had to get Picasso, Leonardo da Vinci, or somebody over here. But look, Netflix got a whole movie about this shit. Nigga, that looked like a log. That looked like a tree log. Look. Hell no. This is the. What that look like? Don't that look like a tree branch or a big ass tree log that girl and still owned by the mayor family. And this was the key to finding the shit. That is false. Rains have been searching. Oh, Miss Globe girl, that's not true. I got my daddy. I got pictures of my daddy's grandparents and, and my daddy's 71. I don't know if you was on here when he was on here, Miss Globe girl. This is not a true statement. Black people could afford portraits. Yes, they could. Yes, they could. That is not true, ma'am. Don't think that. Black people could definitely afford portraits. There, there are a multitude of black portraits from the 1900s. I'm talking about 1900. Don't, don't believe that, baby. That's not true. My daddy right now got photos of his grandmother, and he's 71. That's not true, ma'am. That's not true. That's not true. I promise you that's not true. If you think I'm lying, just look it up. If you think I'm lying, just look it up. Don't just count information out because of what people have been telling. That's not true, ma'am. That's not true. I promise you. Okay, well, you know what? You got it, baby. Whatever you believe to make you sleep good at night, baby girl, you got it. Let's move on. I'm not here to convince nobody. Only thing I ask is that you do the research. If you feel like you just want to be convicted and indoctrinated in whatever it is you believe, really Educational Friday really not the place for you. But if you want to come on and listen, then come on by. Okay? So let's move on. Because I'm not going back and forth with nobody about what's fact. There were definitely a lot of photos of black people in the, in the 1900s. Girl, you crazy.
and for half in width for a man, a foot and a half for one man, one foot and a half for one grown collard green eating African man, one foot for the woman and a half a foot, I'm talking about in width for the child. On a for, allegedly a forty-five day ship ride, packed like sardines under the hull of the ship. Let's say they crammed them in there. How many of the hundred and ten you think survived? Remember, they got to take a number one. They got to take a number two. They got to go through cycles. They got to have, they throw up. They got, we've already established that that would literally create a gas chamber out of a one and a half foot a man, one foot a woman, half a foot wide for a child. And you mean to tell me, we're not even talking about the length wise. We're just talking about width wise. You mean to tell me y'all made it with 110 of the motherfuckers for 45 days? Yes, that's another one, Steve Urkel. Don't forget the women who were pregnant. Hmm. people in there in horrific conditions so cramming 110 people in there in horrific conditions that means you don't even have breathing room right that means you don't have breathing you can't even you you can't even move your head because he said cram you can't even go and you're gonna lay like that for 45 days 45 days, 110 people, 45 days, they pissing, shitting, throwing up, period, all this happening in the hull of a ship with little to no air, pack them niggas in like hot dogs, and you mean to tell me that they made it 45 days? Yeah, Mimi, then hop out and work. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Because remember on the movies and all of that, um, on the movies and all that, Mimi, they didn't have no time to recoup with no fresh air or nothing. Yep. Look, they ain't have no time to recoup. It was get your ass out, line up, let me sell you, and then let's get to the, to the business. Hmm. Girl. Yeah, just so you know, they're about to sit down and speak about what they want to do moving forward. Now, the clear people decided to meet. The clear people said, oh, did it go off? Did it go off? Oh, no. Hold on. Disconnect YouTube. What the fuck? Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Give me a second, y'all. Give me a second. Can y'all hear me? Can you hear me? Damn it. Hold on. Hold on, 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 let me do this, let me do this. Let me do this, let me end it. Well, let me do this. Oh, I know what I could do. Oh, I don't want that to. Shit, I'm going to the Gmail.
Oh, you can hear me? Am I back? Am I back? Put a one in the chat if I'm back. Put a one in the chat if I'm back. Put, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm back. All right, this one I'm gonna do. Cause there it go. Y'all already know how this 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 go. So this is what we going to do. We going to outsmart it. Because I didn't get no email from YouTube saying you violated nothing or no copyright, no nothing. So I don't know what happened. My Wi-Fi is perfect. All I know is we back. This is what I'm going to do. No, I didn't get no strike. I'm literally looking at my email. I didn't get no striker. I didn't even get an email from YouTube saying, you rem I don't know if y'all was on Voodoo Dog TV when I was playing that Lil' Kim music. They struck my ass down to the ground. I didn't get nothing. I, I, I'm refreshing my email right now. I didn't get nothing from YouTube saying I violated anything. Nothing. I promise you. I didn't, give, I didn't get anything. I kept pausing it on purpose just for that. My channel not going opinionated. Don't say that. Don't say that. I'm still here. I'm still here. Here. Y'all, her channel is gone. No, don't say that. I'm here, girl. I don't know why they were reported. Let me go in my spam. I'm looking at my email right now. No, I can't make, you can't make this shit up. I didn't get, I'm, I'm, I'm refreshing my shit as we speak. Let me go in my spam box. And I don't see why I would go to my spam box. Don't none of the other stuff go to my spam box. Nope, nothing is spam. Nothing is spam. Nothing is spam. Nothing is nothing in the spam box. I'm not going uh, opinionated. I'm back. I'm back. Reported for misinformation. I don't know. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to just explain what's going to happen at the end of that. It was saying that on the screen. Let me see. This is what we're going to do. It says stream suspended for policy violations. I don't know what policy because I didn't break no policy uh, violations. But it didn't say my channel was gone. Now, don't say that now. That was a big deal. Don't say my channel gone, girl. Hold on. I can't talk right now, opinionated. I can't talk while I'm on the stream, baby. Hey, I can't. Uh, yeah, I can't talk on the stream. Look, we call me opinionated. Call me when we get off the stream. We're going to discuss it. Listen, listen. Are y'all back? Put a one in the chat if you if you on here and you see me. Put a one in the chat if you on here. They age restrict. They say restricted. Put a one in the chat if you on here and you see me. Okay, so we are live still. I done got rid of the video. I done got rid of the video. We just gonna go with the facts. I'm going to explain to you what's going to happen after that. Them black folk going to sit down with them clear folk. That's why I love Rumble. See, that's why I be... Anyway, look, them black folk going to sit down with them clear folks and talk about moving forward. And the black people want reparations. They want land. And them clear folks said, the fuck? That's what they said. The black folks said, all right, we can make this right. Just give us some land. And the clear folks say, uh-uh, uh, we ain't say all of that now. Let me go back to see what my people say, but I ain't talking about all of that. Why would I say something crazy like that? Now you're doing too much. Let's go get the Clotilda, though. So, remember, they got a movie on Netflix, so it's got to be true. The Clotilda, the slave ship and all of that, it has been debunked to be fake. 
It has been debunked to be fake. Listen to me and listen to me good. I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see it. It has been debunked to be fake. It has been proven by experts that that was never a real ship. See, they don't, they don't tell y'all about this. They only tell y'all about the stuff they want y'all to see. Listen to me. This is from NPR.org. Look. Look. Matt, get out of here, bro. Like, what do you, what do you, Matt, to clear y'all doubt, just travel to the main source, Africa, and learn real history from real historians. YouTubers are not historians. Who are you? You, you clear. I could tell by your name. You clear. Let me get you up off of here. We got a lot of distractions. It'd probably be Matt who reported the stream. Not, not is giving me Matt reported the stream, but let me, let me make sure he can't report it no more. Let me get him up off of here. It's giving me Matt reported the stream, but I'm going to get him up off of here. Because this ain't about me being no historian. I'm giving you the facts. I'm giving you the facts. I'm not telling you. I'm showing you. So we got Matt up out of here. Make another page and come back. So according to NPR.org, it says Alabama wreck isn't the remains of the slave ship Clotilda. Listen to me and listen to me good. Listen to me. And, and, and guess what? If this not up on YouTube, don't worry about, don't worry about it. It's going to be on Rumble. Y'all go, it's going to be, it's going to be on Rumble. So if it ain't on YouTube, we still streaming on Rumble. So you good. And Facebook. So look, according to NPR.org, it says Alabama wreck isn't the remains of the Clotilda, but they made a Netflix movie, Voodoo. What that mean? Oh, let's go on. A shipwreck off the coast of Alabama is not a famous slave ship after all. The Alabama Historical Commission says the ship is, is too new. What? The Alabama Historical Commission says the ship is too new. Let me get on my Dr. Umar. The Alabama Historical Commission says the ship is too new and too large to be the Clotilda, which was the last known vessel to bring enslaved people to the United States in 1860. The Alabama Historical Commission, I didn't say it. This is what they said. I didn't say it. The Alabama Historical Commission says that the ship is too new and it's too large. Let's move on. Ben Rains, a reporter from AL.com, had been searching for the ship and thought he'd find it. What's left of the ship lies partially buried in mud alongside an island in the lower mobile Tinsaw Delta, I'm sorry, a few miles north of the city of Mobile. The hull is tipped to the port side, which appears almost completely buried in mud. The entire length of the starboard side, however, is almost fully exposed. The wreck, which is normally underwater, was exposed during extreme low tides brought on by the same weather system that brought the the bomb cyclone to the eastern seaboard. Low tide around Mobile was about two and a half feet below normal th uh, thanks to north winds that blew for days. <laughs> Nigga said it was actually the Coretta. I guess it was Coretta because it wasn't a Clotilda. As the two were reported in January, before heading out to the site, Rains compiled months of research collecting information from historical records. Let's say that again. Before heading out to the site, Rains compiled months of research collecting information from historical records, articles and notes from the captain's account of the ship. So now the, 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 the dude Rains collected all of this research and records from what the captain said happened. He interviewed locals with the century old ties to the region until he stumbled upon one who told him he might know its location. So rain said to find it out. 
It was old. It was burned. It was right where the guy said the captain burned it. And it was where the local ad old timer said it was, Reigns told NPR. Rain said he couldn't be sure if it was the Clotilda and the historical commission says its experts have ruled it out. You heard that opinionated? The commission says, no, no, I'm sorry. Rain says he couldn't be sure it was the Clotilda, but the historical commission says Experts have ruled it out. The commission says in part, Clotilda was 86 feet long, while the wreck of the commission identifies near 12 Mile Island, which is 158 feet and five inches. Let's go back, because now we got to talk about fakes. According to the records, They said, the captain said, and the record said, that the Clotilda was 86 feet long. This people, this, this research found that the wreckage came from a, 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 a ship that was near 12 Mile Island that is 108, 158 feet and 5 inches long. 86 feet, 159 feet. The newly discovered ship originally had three masts, not two as the Clotilda. So they said the one they found had three masts, but Clotilda said they only had two. The size of the timbers also don't match. And you have to understand, when you talk about the, the measuring part of it, I don't know who measured it back then. I'm pretty sure they did for like, you know, purposes of building, but you can take pieces of the so-called ship that you find today and you can see what size the ship is. Perhaps not telling the commission, uh, perhaps most telling, the commission said the remains don't seem to have fire damage unlike Clotilde. Oh, girl. What? Say that again. Perhaps most telling... The commission says the remains don't seem to have fire damage, but they say Clotilde did. Can somebody drop the rumble link in um, the chat for H-Town and Cali? Please drop the rumble link in the chat. The remains they found don't have no fire damage. Clotilde, they said they set the bitch on fire and it sank. So how is it the remains don't have fire damage, but Clotilde was on fire? Thank you, Mihi Grace. Let me fuck your head up even more. Clotilda was burned and then sank. There is no definitive evidence of burning on the 12 mile island wreck. The damage from small marine organisms that eat wood can look similar to fire damage. Our team ex excavated part of the site to expose areas of the ship to examine, examine the damage. So that means they went down there and took a piece because they wanted to go see. They said, we need to go down here and get a piece of this wood so we can go measure, I mean, do the research ourselves and, and, and do the science ourselves to see what the fuck going on. Undamaged sections of the wreck show the damage was confined to the waterline area only, whereas a fire would have damaged or destroyed the hull above the waterline. What does that mean? Let me say that in plain English. This is what this means. If the ship was caught afire, everything above the water, meaning everything that's not wet, would have been burned to shreds. Remember, this is a wooden ship. This ain't metal. This is a wooden ship. You can literally create a bonfire right now with wood. So they said... This can't be the Clotilda because everything above the water line, which is everything that's not wet, would have been burned to shreds. But this one, we got all the top of the stuff, like it's with no with no fire damage. It goes on to say. Undamaged sections of the wreck showed that damage was confined to the waterline area only, whereas a fire would have damaged and destroyed the hull and above the waterline, which is what I just said. 
Lisa Jones, executive director of, director of the commission, says in a statement that the story of the slave ship has a profound meaning in Alabama and the attention paid to this wreck will inspire a renewed effort to find the Clotilda. Let me put that in layman terms for y'all too. Basically what Ms. Lisa said was this wasn't the Clotilda, but you know what? There's a silver lining to all of these things. Now it'll make us really think about the real Clotilda. Now, let me say this. I didn't say it. This is what they said. This is what they said. Listen, opinionated. Listen to me. I, I get, baby, I love you down to the ground. But I listen, let me show you something. Let me say you something. See, once you understand how the industry works, I don't know if you were on the last couple of educational Fridays. Once you understand how the entertainment industry works, you understand that none of that shit is to be trusted. None of it. I don't care if it's on Netflix, it is not a source. If it is on Netflix, of course they're going to make the movie because they're going to assume, this is what they're going to assume. Well, we got to say something about this because people going to go research it and see that it was a lie. So this is what we going to do. There, It's a plan. It's a pl That's why it's in a movie and not in real life. If it was so, why is it that this part of the Clotilda isn't just as researchable as the other? If you Google Clotilda right now, this will not pop up. I know I did. Again, I'm not here to convince nobody nothing. Y'all can believe whatever you want to believe. The most high put it on my heart to come up here and give y'all the tea, and then y'all can move on without it from there. If you believe Netflix, then fine. Go, you know what I'm saying? Netflix is the source now. That's all I got. Because I understand how the powers that be work. They keep continuing to pump fake black folks so we won't get to the truth by putting entertainment out. That's the same reason why the Roots came out and for years and years they told us it was a full true story until that black man got sued and then at the end of that, he kept, oh yeah, well yeah, it was, it was a lie. You missing the point, opinionated. Even if I put, hold on, listen to me, listen to me. You have to understand how this works. Even if I pull up, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm about to show y'all something. Let me see what's the date on this one. This one is 2018. This is 2018. They found us in 20, they found this ship in 2018. They found this ship in 2018. When people do movies, documentaries, and all, they plan this shit year. This, the, move, the, the Netflix series was probably plan, planned before they even birthed the damn ship. Listen to what I'm trying to get you to understand. If they rewrote, remember I told you earlier that the, a, 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 a credible source also showed us slave ships that really is logically impossible? That doesn't mean that, that opinionated, I'm not going to go back and forth with you, baby. I love you down to the ground, but I'm not on this stream. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that because I feel like right now it's becoming a distraction. I'm going to explain it to you and then I'm going to move on. What I'm trying to tell you is once you understand, once you understand, if you want to believe Netflix of all people, have at it. She did, Medusa? What she said? She said my name? Medusa, what she said? She said my name? Send me the link, Medusa. Send me the link. She did. Send me the link. Send it to me right now on Instagram or something. I would love to. Did she say my name? Just tell me if she said my name. If she said Voodoo Doll TV, then we lit. Then we made it. Nigga, we made it. Did she say my name? Or did she throw subliminals?
even listen to what I'm trying to tell you guys, cam official, opinionated. Even if I use another article, you don't understand how. Th- Let me calm down. Listen to me. The way it works is the system is the system, right? The system, it was implied. All right, I'm going to go check it out. The system works in, in, when you, when, um, when, when you, how do you say, when you conquer a people, it's way bigger than physically conquering a people. It's way bigger than physically conquering a people, right? So you can't just, your strategies can't be, okay, we got better bombs and we just gonna go in and take over. That don't go like that. You have to conquer them psychologically, emotionally, mentally, and physically, and spiritually as well, right? So with that being said, with that being said, if all the, if psychologically, mentally, spiritually, and physically, and emotionally are all taken into account, right? What I'm trying to tell you is, even if they reprinted an article, we've already, um, listen, we've already proven that they will tell you a lie. We pulled up a, a reputable source that was telling us about the slave ships. We pulled up a reputable source that was telling us about the slave ships. So we all know reputable, I, t- I say that, reputable sources ain't even reputable no more. Cam official, we're not missing the point, but what you're saying is misrepresented. No, it's not. Listen to what I'm saying. Cam official, I'm not trying to get upset, but if I feel like y'all not listening on purpose. And I'm not going to deter my, my stream between you and opinionated because y'all are not trying to hear what I'm saying. You don't have to agree. I get it. What I'm saying is listen to what I'm telling you. This shit is way beyond our fucking comprehension. The stuff that they doing. It's not misrepresented. The people who control the the press, the people who control the information controls what happens. So with that being said, if somebody comes and counteracts something that they said, guess what? They control the people in the in the in the press. So they just go right back in and uncounteract it. That's how that goes. I'm not here to convince nobody of nothing. It's not that black people want to lie about their lineage. And I'm not staying on this. Some black people really don't know. Some some black people really don't know. And that's okay. But this is why I say educational Fridays and and, and, and morning Joseph's ain't for everybody. Because it's going to be a topic that somebody is dead set on is this or that. There's no way. And then you're not going to get it. And I get it. But don't interrupt the stream with that. I just showed you point after point after point, receipt after receipt after receipt of the same reputable sources lying to you. And you're going to get up here and tell me because the same reputable source reprinted something that it, it's got to be true. Think about what we're talking about right here. Think about Listen. Think about, let me calm down. I just showed you his, uh, 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 was it history? No. What was that reputable source? Um, 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 history.com.org or something like that was a reputable source. They the same reputable source. This is a .org site, a APA approved site that showed you that the slave ships were real, that they were able to, 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 um, to, to, to bring all these people over here on these slave ships. And we literally just debunked it. This is a reputable source. Now, this reputable source put out a story. Then they turned around and it was debunked. And then they came right back and debunked what was debunked. This is what I'm saying. Of course, they're going to do that. That's what they do. They run it. That's, that's their, they, they in charge. But don't just say that I'm misinforming people because even if I go pull, see, that's why I kind of struggle. 
Because when Cam officials say stuff like, oh, it's misinformation. No, it's not. Do you know how to do research? Do you know how to research? Do, do you really know and understand how research goes? I can go pull that. If I was writing a thesis or, or a research paper right now on the Clotilda, I can use the 2022 version, the 2018 version, and the original um, version that tells me that the shit was real and I can still make my point. Do you, that, that's how research works. You know that, right? That's exactly what they did, Angela. Thank you. Let me go get this comment. You hit the, the nail on the head. That's exactly what they did. Where Angela commented? Boom. I tell y'all, every time I come on here, I'm not, listen. I am not here to convince nobody or nothing on my mama. I'm not trying to hear to convince nobody on here or nothing. But walk away from this shit believing whatever the hell you want to believe. But what I'm trying to tell you is just because they make a reprint doesn't make it true. Y'all sound like Brother Jabari right now. That don't make it true because they reprinted it. They control the print. Of course they're going to reprint it. They got a movie coming out. This the last one I'm gonna address, uh, opinionated, and then after that, I'm not going back and forth with you. I love you down to the ground, but after this, I'm not going back and forth with you, baby. Please have your opinion in silence. It says voodoo, you are incorrect, and that's okay. How is it disrupting the stream? Because I, we know our truth as well, just like your research, we research too. Don't think after the documentary I didn't research it. Fine, I, you got it. You're right. You you know what? Everybody on this stream opinionated is right and I'm wrong. Everything that I said is completely wrong because this shit is. I know when I started this stream, I said I need everybody to open their third eye. I said because we've been lied to. And I said, um, I said, I said, them people have institutionalized. And indoctrinated us to believe their lies over our logic. I think I started off saying that. So with that being said, what I'm trying to say, and I'm going to say this the last time and then I'm moving on. Even if they reprinted an article, even if they reprinted an article, they have a movie coming out, a documentary on Netflix. They have to reprint an article. If that was the case, if, if it was really not true, why is the first one in 2018 and the second one in 2022? When did the documentary come out? It's not about being right or wrong, but let me ask you a question. If the 2018 article was wrong, why did it take them to 20? Let me go see. What's the name of the documentary? What's the name of the documentary? Opinionated. What's the name of the documentary? Somebody put the name of the documentary in here. No, I'm, I, I just want to see, because there's a few naysayers, and that's fine. What's the name of the documentary in here? I'm waiting for somebody to put the name of the documentary so I can go get it. The Descendants. Thank you. I appreciate you. I'm going to just go get it. <coughs> Talk about a story of convenience. <coughs> Look. The documentary came out September 29, 2022. They retracted the 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 them they retracted <coughs> I'm sorry and debunked what was debunked from 2018, 2019, 2020, 21, 22. It took them 4 years to re retract what the 2018 article said.
The documentary came out in 2022, and by coincidence, the 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 correction came out in 2022. Let's move on, man. Let's move on. Let's move on. I'm not doing that. If who listen, if you want to believe Netflix, then have at it. I'm not here to convince you of nothing, baby. I'm not a convincer. That ain't what I do. You know? Let's move on. Um, so what I was saying, you guys, was let me close all these windows. I got too many windows open. Hold on. Let me close some of these windows. Sorry, y'all. Hold on one second. Let me go back to the uh the window I was on. All right, this is where this is where I'm at with it, and this is where I, this is where my position is gonna stand because it's bigger than who wrote the latest article for me. What I understand is how the system works, and I understand how they update information. See, this is why they went from books and paper to to cyber because it's easier for them to control the narrative, right? So if we had like if I go get a book about something they put on Google, I guarantee you they would they would not they would not be the same. If I go get a book on the, the Revolutionary War and then Google the Revolutionary War, I guarantee you those stories will not be the same. There will be a lot of things that are completely different. So with that being said, the reason that they're capable of doing what they're doing, which is righting the wrong or updating information all for the purposes of making money and pushing a narrative, which is Netflix, that, that that's the power that they have. The point of educational Fridays and the point of morning Joseph is for you to think outside of that box they done boxed us in. I too was there. So I understand. I was there too. And this is no shade to Cam official and no shade to opinionated. What I'm saying is I understand that these people control what we know and what we learn. So of course they're going to redact that. And of course they're going to go back and say it was wrong because they got a movie coming out. That's money. But let's just go with this. Let's just say you're absolutely right. Them people is from the Clotilde. The Clotilde, we showed you the boat, but it don't matter. They packed them niggas in so close, they damn near was having babies with each other. They packed them niggas in 110 on that small ass ship, right? And brought them all the way over here on a alleged 45 day uh, uh, tour when we all know it takes 60 to 90 days on a wooden ship to come from Africa, Ghana, or Africa to America. Period, point blank. So the 45 days is flawed within itself. And then we're not even factoring in the fact that they travel through the fucking Atlantic Ocean. Even in 2024, with mechanized ship, it's hard to do that shit. But for all intents and purposes, the Clotilde was true. And them people is real descendants. Y'all go watch the descendants on Netflix. Go watch the descendant on Netflix, because... You know, I'm not going back and forth with nobody. Um, and the reason I said it disrupted the stream is because it was a lot of resistance going back and forth saying, pull up another article when you wasn't listening to what I was trying to say. So that in itself was a disruption of the screen, of the screen. And with that being said, I'm getting off of here because I don't have time. I don't. I don't. I truly don't. You guys like the video if you have not already. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you, Gina, for the cash app. I appreciate you, my love. You guys like the video for, if you want to support for free. Thank you, Mama Cedar, for the cash app. I appreciate you. Thank you. Who else on here? Thank you. Oh, I already read you. Hold on. I'm sorry, y'all. Thank you, Renee. Uh, do Oh. She said, do not read my name. I didn't say your last name. <laughs> Thank you. I ain't going to say your tag now because you said don't read your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Nurse Divine. New sub. Love the content. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, Sh Shalana, for the cash app. I appreciate you. Uh, 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 who else on here? I already read you.
Thank you, L. Webb. Thank you for the commentary and time blessings. Thank you so much. And I thought I saw somebody else sent me one with the uh the little the stuff. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Tammy D, for the cash app. Thank you for being for being the hardworking woman. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys so much. I'm done with this tonight. I, I'm going to give me. I'm going to sit down and smoke my hookah. My nerves bad. I'm done. Um, you guys, I appreciate y'all for being here. If you can, please go outside and get some sun. Go outside and let the uh the the sun replenish that eye right there, because that's the only way it's gonna open. You got to get out there and let let the sun open that up and and go do some grounding or something like that. You know, I appreciate y'all. If you haven't already, please hit the like button. I pre I'm sorry for the um. Uh, uh, I'm sorry for the, the confusion as far as the stream being cut. That wasn't my fault, but I just turned the, the whole video off and that was that. I hope you guys enjoy hearing my daddy. If you wasn't on here, rewind to the very beginning. My daddy came on here and spoke a word about some things and I think it's super educational and um, you'll probably learn a lot about me. But anyway, I'm going to joke y'all out like I joke y'all in. I appreciate every single one of y'all. Bye, y'all, and I'll see y'all tomorrow sometime during some time. I'm, I'm doing my garden tomorrow, but I'll see y'all sometime tomorrow. Love y'all. Peace. Check one two one two. We live, baby. Come, come, come on. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Can you can you can you hear me now? Oh, let's go. <laughs> it's your boy Big Chew, the voice of the beat. You know what I want? Blaze up! Come on, Blaze up! It's a beat for me. Wah 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 wah